The umpires tonight now are meeting at home plate, and the, this crew will be headed by Nestor Shalak Jr., who will be calling the balls and strikes tonight. 24 years, the dean of Major League umpires. This is his fifth World Series. Ed Sudol of the National League will be at third, 21 years of service, number two in service. There you see Ed working at first base. At second base, it'll be Larry McCoy of the American League. He's a rookie in the World Series in umpiring. Jerry Dale of the National League will be at third base, another first-year man in the World Series. And down the left and right field lines and left, it'll be Jim Evans of the American League and John McSherry of the National League. The field is in very good shape. There has been no rain. They're expecting some rain later this evening, perhaps rain into tomorrow, as you see the dimensions of Yankee Stadium. 312 to the left field foul pole, left center, and 430. It's very deep out in left center, going right on into dead center. And over in the straight right center, it is 417 feet. The short porch that has become such a legend in Yankee Stadium is 310 feet down the right field line and 353 feet in straightaway right field. So the Yankees now have gone onto the field. Now let's check the batting for the Dodgers with Howard. Okay, here's the Dodger lineup. Davey Lopes, the speeds to the great base dealer, will be leading off. He plays second base. Bill Russell, the shortstop. And batting third, perhaps the best switch hitter since Mantle and Rose, Reggie Smith. Batting fourth, the slugger, Ron Say. They call him the penguin, walks like a duck. Batting fifth. The steady going one with the great power in the opposite field, Steve Darby here at 297. Then the hero of the National League Championship Playoff Series, Dusty Baker, had two home runs then, won a grand slam, had 291 on the air. After him, the young defensive whiz in center field, Glenn Burke. After him, the shotgun arm of Steve Yeager, the catcher. And, of course, after him, the feisty, confident pitcher of the Dodgers who's never lost a postseason game, Don Sutton. Now setting the Yankees defensively in left field, Lou Pinella, good arm, and better speed than you might think from a guy his size. Pinella in left, over in center, the man who was electric during the American League Championship Series, Mickey Rivers, an arm that can be tested by these Dodgers. But in right field, it's Reggie Jackson, and he's got plenty of cannon for a throwing arm defensively in right field. At third base, Greg Nettles, as Bill White mentioned, he has a sore shoulder tonight. He may not be able to go all the way. We'll see what happens. It's a very sore shoulder. The shortstop is Bucky Dent, who came to the Yankees just before the season started this year, has done an admirable job. At second base, one of the fine young players in the American League, Willie Randolph. And over at first base, a man who has been so big in Yankee fortunes the last two seasons, Chris Chambliss, the big first baseman, swinging left-handed, good fielder. Thurman Munson, the captain of the Yankees, behind the plate. Tends to throw the ball sometimes, a little sidearm to second, but he gets it there. And Don Gullett, who opened the playoff series for the Yankees, did not get the ball into the strike zone effectively, left with a sore shoulder, but he has fought back with heat treatments, and now suddenly here he is starting the ball game. And a year ago, he was the starting pitcher for the Cincinnati Reds against the New York Yankees. That's how the tides of fortune have changed so briefly and so recently in baseball. Davy Lopes up there with a 283 average on the season, and the first pitch is high ball one. This is the man that Don Gullett must try to keep off the bases, Tom Seaver. Yeah, this is the guy that's the key to beating the Dodgers right here. Davy Lopes is the guy that makes this machine run. He's got good speed. He'll steal second base from you. He'll go to first or third. If he gets on, and another thing that a lot of people don't realize, Keith, that he makes Bill Russell a much better hitter when he gets on first base. Russell has been surprising in his bad effectiveness, having struck out only 43 times this year. And Lopes hits it high in the air, down the left side. The wind's got a hold of it, and it's going to pick it away from Luke Vanella and drop into the stands foul. There is the first souvenir of the 1977 World Series. When Gullett started against Kansas City in the American League Championship Playoff Series, he started very quickly as he did tonight. Two quick balls, but followed it with two more. The shoulder was stiff. According to Don, the stiffness has worked out, and he's ready. His principal pitch, perhaps, is the fork ball. Tom, describe the action of the fork ball and why it's especially effective against righties. Fork ball is much like a knuckleball, Howard. It comes up there, and it'll flutter as it comes to the home plate, and it will sink. Uh, Donnie's base pitch is his fastball. That's his bread and butter pitch. The two and one pitch to Davy Lopes is high. It is now three and one. The book on Don Gullett in his one appearance in the playoff series for the American League title. Two innings, four hits, four runs, all earned. He walked two. Three and one pitch to Lopes. High ball four. Davy is on. 
That's a no-no, Keith, right there. You just can't walk that guy, especially Dave Lowe. I mean, he's in the, he's in the class with the Lou Brocks and the, the other guys in the league, the Pete Roses, that make things happen for their ball club. And he is the he's the key to making this Dodger team roll. In 1977, Lopes has stolen 47 of 59 bases. The batter now is Bill Russell, the shortstop. Russell hitting behind Lopes, number two in the order this year. He batted number eight last year. He shortened the stroke a little, and he fouls the first pitch away for strike one. Very first pitch, you see Russell trying to hit that ball in that hole between uh, Willie Randolph and Chris Chambers. which was a hole out there to right field. First law of the game. The basement. Again, the effectiveness of Russell, 634 at bats, struck out only 43 times. He made contact to protect the speedster on the base. The outfield, Rivers and center, particularly playing him shallow. Lopes on the right side of your screen, the pitch. Hit into the hole, it's going through. It'll make go to the wall. Russell got all of it. Lopes is coming around third. He's going to score. Russell, he's heading for third base. The relay comes in. The Dodgers take the lead one to nothing. A triple for Bill Russell, and Rivers played shallow in center field, had no chance in the world to get through it. Took the Dodgers very long to get on the board. Billy Russell hit him with no balls in the strike here, a fastball right up in his eyes. He can't throw him that pitch there. That's going to be in the alley, and that's, that's like the Grand Canyon out there. There's so much room in the alleys in this ballpark. Lopes scored very easily from first base. Reggie Smith now with nobody out, one run in, takes high, ball one, and Billy Russell sitting on third base. Reggie Smith steps out of the batter's box now with a 307 average on the season, and Billy Martin goes to the mound to talk to Don Gullett. He can't afford to let Gullett get hammered around too much. Exactly the point. He had that problem all year long. It seemed that forever the Yankees were fighting back. Russell did find that Grand Canyon, as you said, Tom, and you put your finger on the nub of it. When Gullett comes in high, as he did with that pitch, he is looking for a quick exit. You've got to pitch them low. Nobody knows that better than you. Well, if he, if he wants to throw high, Howard, he's really got to pop the ball. He's got a good enough arm to pop it. Uh, but you've really got to throw hard to be able to throw upstairs. Billy Martin wants that left-hander to stay there a while because right-handed this year, Reggie Smith hit five home runs and 15 runs batted in. Swing and a miss for a strike. Left-handed, however, he is at 27 home runs and knocked in 72. So he is much more of a free swinger from the left side and more productive. 1-1 one, one pitch. High and inside. It's 2-1 and one to Reggie Smith. As Baby Lopes walked to lead the inning for the Los Angeles Dodgers, Billy Russell tripled him home, and Russell now sits at third with nobody out. And Dick Tedro is already up in the Yankee bullpen. He's the middle or long relief man for the Yankees. High. Three and one. Gullet having all kinds of trouble getting that ball down. Looking much as he did in the opening inning against Kansas City. You'll remember he went out in the second. They got two in the first off him, two in the second. The left-hander from Malone, K Kentucky. Misses again. Ball four. He has walked two and given up a triple in the top of the first inning. Keith Billy doesn't need this. His, he went through a lot of pitching down Kansas City in the championship series playoffs. And he needs this pitcher right now, Don Gullett, to give him good, a good six or seven strong innings. He can't afford to get in that bullpen in the first or second inning because they're tired. Those pitchers out there need a rest. Number four man in the order, Ron Say, third baseman up. Had 30 home runs. He had a grand slam against the Phillies. He hits this with a mile high to left field. Lou Pinella going back. He's going back. He's got room. He makes the catch. Russell tags. And the throw comes in. The Dodgers lead 2 to nothing. Let me say that in most ballparks, that would be a home run to left field. Well, Not Ron, in this ballpark. Ronnie says pretty happy he drove in a run. But if they hit that ball in Dodger Stadium, they'd be ahead, uh, what would it be, 3 to nothing right now or 4 to nothing right now? 1 to nothing. Steve Garvey, the Dodger first baseman. 297, 33 homers, 115 runs batted in. Garvey, coming to the ballpark, said, here is the park where you want to hit the line drive. The ball carries in the alleys well. The winds swirl in the outfield. Two to nothing Dodgers. Top of the first, Reggie Smith on first base. 
And it's ball one to Steve Garvey and a concerned Billy Martin in the New York dugout. Tom Lasorda at the third base side in the Dodger dugout. If there's a difference between Say and Garvey, it's that Say is a, almost strictly a pull hitter, where Garvey has tremendous ability to hit to the opposite field and the long ball to the opposite field. High and outside, ball two. Dusty Baker is on deck as Steve Garvey has a look down the third baseline at Preston Gomez, the coach there. Jim Gilliam coaches at first. Dick Tidro warming up in the Yankee bullpen. Reggie Smith coming off first base. Two runs are in, one man out. Garvey checks and takes it. It's three and nothing. How do you pitch Garvey, Tom? Is this, is this my trade secrets that I've got to give away? <laughs> you know, Don Gullett is throwing 94 miles an hour. He's really popping the ball. He's throwing the ball right down the middle of the plate. Like that. You cannot pitch behind. Now, he's been... He's been three and one here. He was behind Reggie Smith. He was behind Davy Lopes to lead off the game. One of the cardinal rules of pitching is that you cannot pitch behind. These, these hitters are too good. If you give them that much edge, where well, they're going to sit on that fastball three and one, it doesn't make any difference how hard you throw it. Smith going. Garvey swings and misses. We got Smith hung up. So Reggie Smith caught in a rundown between first and second for the second out. Reggie got a decent break off Gullet. Had he kept going, he might have had a shot at him. But he chose to come back, and from that point on, he was dead. The Dodgers have a luxury of a two-run lead right here in the first inning. Tommy Lasorda is going to take advantage of it. Right. He can play hit run. He can go ahead with a three-and-one count and let Steve Garvey take a shot of that hole over there. He's not usually going to run Reggie Smith. But he's got the luxury of that situation where he can, and then there's Don Gullett walking another man. That is the third base on balls here in the top of the first inning by Don Gullett as Garvey now goes to first. So that commitment by Reggie Smith, a little bit expensive, otherwise he might have been sitting out at second base with one out. Now here comes one of the most dramatic figures in all of baseball for 1977, Dusty Baker. Especially when you think of what he went through a year ago. He had the damaged knee. He was a tremendous disappointment to the Dodgers who acquired him in a trade from Atlanta. But then knee surgery and this year the great resurgence and of course the hitting hero of the playoff series. He also had a grand slam home run. Hits this one hard to the left side. Nettles goes to second the short way to get the lead runner and the inning is over. But the Los Angeles Dodgers punch through against Don Gullett and they take the lead at the top of the first inning 2-0 with the Yankees coming up with those three hitters. Mickey Rivers, the man who ignites the Yankees, leading off. He had 326 on the season. Willie Randolph, the all-purpose athlete at second. He can hit and run, believe me. Thurman Munson, last year's MVP in the American League, batting third to catch him. Reggie Jackson, the controversial one in right field, 110 RBIs. Chris Chambliss, the man who won the pennant a year ago with his home run. Then Greg Nettles with the damaged shoulder from the George Brennan Brolio the other day, batting sixth. And after Greg, Lou Pinella with his 330 average, batting seventh. And after Lou, Bucky Dent, the shortstop. And then the very problem mentioned by Bill White was some to the pitcher, Don Gullett. Because in the American League, all year long, designated hitters. Here's Keith, the play-by-play. -play. All right, and it's Mickey Rivers, Willie Randolph, Thurman Munson, the top three, as the Dodgers will set them for you defensively as soon as we get past Mickey Rivers here in the bottom of the first inning, with the Dodgers having taken a 2 to nothing lead, and the first pitch is ball one from Don Sutton. It was a breaking pitch. Get on the ground of the second baseman, Davey Lopes, and he throws him out. The Dodgers have Dusty Baker in left, Glenn Burke in center, Reggie Smith in right, Ron Say in third, Bill Russell at short, Davy Lopes in second, Steve Garvey at first, Steve Yanker catching, and Don Sutton doing the pitching. There's the lineup, and you've got one out. Willie Randolph, with a 274 average on the season, stands in from the right side looking at Sutton. And he just misses for ball one. Dick Hauser is the coach at third and Bobby Cox at first base for New York. On the corner and Nestor Shylock gives it the big right-handed ball. It's one and one. 
Don Sutton, who works in broadcasting in the offseason. Low. Two balls and one strike. Don, born in Clio, Alabama. Grew up in Pensacola, Florida. Now lives in Calabasas, California. He's another hard-headed dude out on that pitching mound. Pulled out to third baseman Ron Say. Ronnie throws him out. Two down. The captain of the Yankees coming to the plate now, Thurman Munson. Here's the play at third by Ron Say. They call it the Penguin. It's noticeable when he runs more than anything else and that he does not lift his feet very high off the ground. He's the guy that Dodgers tried to deal off. I've told the story before. They thought they had him sold to Milwaukee. Frank Lane was then a very important factor in the Milwaukee front office, and he said, we ain't buying no duck. <laughs> now he's sorry. That duck hit a lot of home runs this year. He didn't sure he? did. <laughs> he, did. <laughs> he got to waddle around the bases yeah. quite a bit. Munson hits it high in the air. Coming back, chasing it, Steve Yeager to the dugout steps. It's in the crowd. Thurman, in 1976, against the Cincinnati Reds, was really the only effective Yankee offensively. He hit 529 on 9 out of 17. He's an amazing competitor, Keith. He really is. He's been unhappy all year long. He hasn't shrouded it. Get on the field again. He had a 300-year. Many, many clutch hits. Holds the ball club together. He is the guts and glue of the New York Yankees. The Dodgers give him the gap in left center field. Defensively in the outfield, and Sutton comes outside for the fastball. I'm a little surprised at the outfield alignment, Tom. Well, this is probably the way they're going to pitch him. I think I talked to Donnie yesterday. He said he's going to pitch him away, let him hit the ball out there. He doesn't want to give him anything inside in there to hit. Well, he just did. He's got that one inside, and Thurman spanked at the left field for the first base hit of the ball game for the Yankees. Especially, uh, he does the pitch that he can get the ball out of the ballpark if you get the ball in on it. Ron Say, good defensive third baseman. Good quickness. That ball was really hit like a bullet. Say didn't miss it by all that much. It looked so, like a sinker or a slider that maybe hung inside, but that's that's a pitch that Don Sutton, I'm sure, did not want to throw. Here's the complex, sensitive man who had so many ups and downs all year long. At one point said, I don't want to play here next year. But in the long run, the last six weeks, strike one. Oh, how he came through. Wound up with 110 runs, batted in 32 homers. He put on a decent display in batting practice tonight, too, as he ripped one after another into the right field seats. That pitch is low. It's one ball and one strike. Don Sutton and Reggie Jackson have faced each other previously in World Series play in 1974 when Jackson was playing with the Oakland A's. Got a double, a single, and a walk. I asked Sutton about it. Sutton said, forget the double. It was a check swing. And the walk, he said, my mother didn't raise any food. <laughs> <laughs> one one pitch to Reggie Jackson with Munson on first base. And the pitch is inside. He checked on it. It's two and one. Or one and two. He was injured when Seba had a pitch against him. Two and one. Reggie Jackson was injured. <laughs> he had two doubles off of me. I, I know. Up. <laughs> Drove in two runs in the game that we end up losing to the Athletics three to one. Munson edges off first base. Two one pitch to Jackson. He checked on that one. He looped it into short center field for a base hit. Munson coming around second, heading for third. He'll go in standing. And Jackson is on. Well, he's a check swing master against Sutton, Tom. You can't do that without being a strong man. That's any other man, that's going to be a pop-up, either the pitcher or to the shortstop. Reggie Jackson is so strong, he can hang with that ball and knock it over the infielder's head. That's a frustrating thing for a pitcher. Don Sutton is a real pro, and you're not going to let something like that upset him. He's Mr. Cool on the mound, and he's in a tough situation right here, even though he's ahead two to nothing, but he's got men on the corners. With two out, the pitch to Chris Shambliss. Pull to right field. Base hit. It's a two-to-one ball game as Thurman Munson comes in to score. So we've got all the excitement you could ask for and all the excitement we expected. The Yankees and Dodgers at it again in the World Series. Just the first inning. And Bill White talked about the need for the Yankee left-handers to hit in the pregame show. 
This is exactly why they didn't hit against Kansas City, but they are hitting so far here. Jackson and Sandler proving the point. The storyline develops. Greg Nettles at the plate. Yankee third baseman takes a breaking pitch inside. This is a guy that will knock a fastball out of the county. You cannot feed him a dose of fastballs. He'll knock your head off. Chambliss on first. Jackson at second. Two to one. Dodgers lead. Yankees striking back here at the bottom of the first against Don Sutton. Inside. Breaking pitch. And it's two balls and no strikes to Nettles. You don't want to do that to Greg Nettles. A dead fastball hitter, and he can't hit it out of the county, Keith, because I played with him before. I played with him up in Alaska. There's Lasorda on your picture, too. Don Sutton, not as overpowering with the fastball as he might have been at one time. Spot pitcher, he's now gone to 3 0 to Greg Nettles. Lou Pinella is on deck. Should Nettles get aboard? Jackson off second. Chambliss off first. Three balls and no strikes to Greg Nettles. Strike. So the cripple was in. It's three and one. Trying to keep that. I can't see any problem with Don out there. He's gotten behind Greg Nettles, which he hasn't wanted to do. He looks like he's throwing very well. It's very difficult for me to tell up here. This is. This is as far as I get away from the pitchers now, and it's very difficult for me to tell this far away. But he looks like he's all right to me. We had him on the judge gun, Tom Seaver, at 88 miles an hour, so he is fast enough. Swing and a foul off Steve Yeager. Don Sutton is not an overpowering pitcher. He's no, not the guy that's going to throw 98 miles an hour or 94 miles an hour, but you're going to have to hit it a fastball, a good changeup, a curveball, and a good slider, and he can get any one of them over at any time. And is a nibbler. You're yes, absolutely right. Control. Excellent control, and he doesn't usually does not pitch behind. Dodger bullpen has not moved. Three and two pitch coming to Nettles as Jackson and Chambliss edge off. They're running. Pitch is bounced to Bill Russell at shortstop. He goes to first baseman Steve Garvey, and the inning is over. But the New York Yankees strike back in the bottom of the first inning after one complete inning of play at Yankee Stadium in the opening game of the 1977 World Series, Los Angeles 2, New York 1. Yankee Stadium from high in the sky, not quite as symmetrical down on the field as it might appear from that distance, and it's full of folks. Oh, <laughs> is it ever. For the Dodgers, Glenn Burke, Steve Yeager, and the pitcher, Don Sutton. Glenn Burke playing center field tonight. Recall from Albuquerque in 1977, June 3rd, replacing Al Downing on the roster. Signed the contract, his first World Series appearance. He takes the first pitch in the World Series from Don Gullett for ball one. Two to one, the Dodgers lead the Yankees as we go to the top of the second inning. I'll tell you, Mr. Gullett reached in for that one. He really did. That was a Gullett pitch when Gullett's right. 93 miles an hour on the jugs gun. He has the quickness. It's a matter of getting it where he wants it, and it's two balls and one strike as it came inside there. When you look back on the uh, inning pitch by Sutton, Tom, he had some tough breaks, the check swing single, the Chambliss ground ball with eyes. Gullet is throwing hard. I'm sitting here looking. I'm looking on the monitor here. It's tough for me to tell when I look down to the field. That pitch went right by Burke. That one went right by Burke. He is Blue really bringing it up there. He got up to 95 miles an hour on that pitch. In the dugout, that's known as bringing it. If you're hitting, it's called help. Or trying to hit it. Got him. Out of river. Fastball right in there. He looks exactly the same as he did when he was pitching for Cincinnati. Good hard throw right over the top. First strikeout in the ball game. Here is the Dodger catcher, Steve Yeager. That made Billy Martin happy, I want to tell you. I would think. He is really throwing out there. This is a beautiful night for a pitcher. I mean, it's about 60 degrees. It's a good night for hitters, too. But this is a refreshing kind of temperature to pitch in. You don't get sap because of the real hot weather, humid weather. And it's not cold enough where you're going stiffen, to stiffen up. Well, it comes high on his first pitch to Steve Yeager. They're going to start calling old Steve Scrap Iron one of these days. He has survived two severe injuries and a near mortal collision from Dave Parker of the Pittsburgh Pirates this year. Foul back here. 
New ball goes to the mound. This program, an exclusive presentation of ABC Sports. Let's pause five seconds to allow our local stations to identify themselves. The Los Angeles Dodgers lead the New York Yankees in the top of the second inning of play in game number one of the 1977 World Series by a score of two to one. Glenn Burke struck out to lead this inning, and now here's Steve Yeager, the Dodger catcher, taking a pitch that sailed way outside, and it's two and one. Don Sutton, the pitcher, is on deck. No DH in this World Series. No designated hitter. It goes on an alternating basis. They used the designated hitter last year. This year, the pitchers will hit. And there's Sutton sitting on deck, waiting. Yeager swings and misses. Yeager knew it was coming in. He's a good fastball hitter. Threw it right by him. Gullet, who walked three men, gave up two runs and a triple in the top of the first inning to the Dodgers for their two runs, has settled some here in the top of the second. I'm sure that Don had to be a little anxious, too. Had to be a little tight, perhaps, wondering if he was going to be able to get past the first couple of innings. Yeager hits it on the ground with a shortstop. Lucky Dent, playing him in the hole, throws it out. Lucky Dent, who came over from Cleveland, moving into the hole at shortstop, had plenty of time to get the Dodger catcher. Made a good play out of him. Here is Don Sutton. A 151 batting average on the year, but Don generally will get some uh, bat on the ball. I say Cleveland, I meant Chicago. It came from the White Sox. There have been times when Sutton has helped himself tremendously in baseball games. Of course, right now, the bases are clean with Sutton up there, but time and again, I've seen him walk up there and just stick it out there and pop it. <laughs> You're right. He can hit on occasion. So can Tommy John, like Tom Seaver in our booth. Swing and a miss. It's one and one for the Dodger pitcher. First time Tom came back to Shea Stadium this year is going against his old friend Jerry Kuzman. And he knocked in the first run of the ball game. Shot one down the right center alley. Kuzman drooped. Back two. A spin in the uh, second base with a double. <laughs> and three home runs this year, Howard. I've got to get that on you. I had That's three right. home runs. That's when Kuzman said trade me. <laughs> <laughs> And the Dodgers go in order in the top of the second inning. As Gullet strikes out, Burt Sutton and gets Jager to ground the shortstop. It's two to one Dodgers after one and a half. The bottom third of the order for the New York Yankees. It'll be sweet Lou Pinella. Those are not those folks. Those are Lou's. They love it. He at 330. 12 home runs and 45 runs batted in. He'll be followed by Bucky Dent and then the pitcher Don Gullet. Wants another hard hat as he comes out there tomorrow night. The Yankees and Dodgers, same time, 8 Eastern time. And an interesting development, Keith, starting for the Yankees tomorrow night. Jim, Catfish Hunter, who's been idle for so long, has had so many ailments all year long. Such a disappointing season. But they think he's ready now, and he thinks so, too. Vanella hits it high and deep to left field. Baker goes over. Here comes uh, the center fielder for the Dodgers, Glenn Burke, and he makes the catch. And Vanella got most of it, but it got up in the wind. It had too much height and not enough bat. And Burke brought it down. A great pitcher, Tom, develops an image, even as you have. And, of course, Catfish is one of the greatest of all modern-day pitchers. And they remember how the Catfish has been in every key game, including the opening game in the American League Championship Series a year ago. So they think he will frighten the Dodgers at the very least. Bucky Dent, the Yankee shortstop, takes a pitch from Don Sutton, breaking pitch low. Bucky came uh, from Chicago in 1977 in the Oscar Gamble deal. Both men have done well, their respective teams. As a strike, it's one and one. The things about playoffs and World Series, Howard, and guys like Catfish Hunter and guys like Don Sutton. They come up. They are the professionals in the game today, and you don't have to give them that hat on the rear end. They're going to be there. And a guy like Catfish Hunter, who has been there so often and done so much, he's going to do a good job tomorrow. You got to name Catfish Hunter as your starting pitcher. One and two, the count on Bucky Dent. Just missed. It's two and two. There's James. There's Catfish taking a chew with the towel wrap. Taking a nap. 
Well, he's got enough country in him. He believes he can get you out somehow, no matter how much he might be hurt. Hard shot left side. Great play, Ron Say. Scoops and throws. Got him. Watch the Cougar over at third as he makes the play. I prefer to call him a Cougar. The cougar? Yes. I was wondering you know, about that. Stadium. You should have seen him upset after USC jumped all over his <laughs> alma mater. Of course, we've got a little Trojan sitting yeah. over here doing all the giggling. You know? yeah, keep what happened you, Saturday? Uh, that's what question I asked you when I saw you this morning. What happened to my Trojan Saturday? <laughs> Easy. They lost. Don Gullet up. Looks. It's high. Ball what? Top of the order is on deck in Mickey River. With two out and nobody on. A two to one ball game, Dodgers lead. We are now in the bottom of the second. Swing and a miss. Well, that's a little better swing than he used to have. Dullard is, a, there's Mickey Rivers' leadoff hitter on deck. Dullard is a good athlete, and he was a good hitter for the Cincinnati Reds. He was a good all around athlete. And even though he hasn't hit all year, he's going to do a decent job. That ball just fouled on the right field line. He turned on that high heater. Sparky Anderson really liked this young man. He said he was one of the finest all-around athletes that they ever had. Quiet, but effective. Don Sutton comes to the plate. Gullet swings. Ball bounces loose. Yeager goes to Garvey, and the inning is over. And so the Yankees go in order in the bottom of the second inning. So after two complete innings of play, it's Dodgers two, the Yankees one. There is a box loaded with bosses. That's true. Bowie Kuhn, baseball's commissioner. Leonard Golinson, chairman of the board of ABC. And Elton Rowe, president of the conglomerate ABC. Golinson with a happy smile. He's just seen the latest prime time rating. <laughs> and that's Tom Seaver's boss. That's my agent right there. I'd like to know his barber. <laughs> they can't knock Bowie this year for not wearing a top coat, although Leonard was wearing one, Keith. Top coat's not needed tonight. Beautiful night. Don't need him tonight. Top of the order for the Dodgers now is go to inning number three. Davy Lopes, Bill Russell, and Reggie Smith. Davy Lopes, who walked the lead and scored one of the two Dodger runs. Rhode Island is home. And Davy takes. Oh, strike one. Providence, Rhode Island, now lives down in Culver City, California. We had good shots of both pitches just before the game started. Outside. And it seemed to me as an onlooker that the nervousness in Gullet was registered in the face. In contrast to Sutton. What's your view, Tom? Looked like it. A face in the high fastball. Couldn't quite get the <laughs> fastball. He couldn't get his arm through. He is definitely settling down now. He's throwing awfully well. Out is one ball and two strikes to Davy Lopes. Well, he had to be concerned, my goodness, after struggling for so much, being hurt all season, and having this opportunity. Well, there's He's no pro. player on the field, Keith, that's not nervous. And he just caught Davy Lopes looking with a fastball from right home, right down the heart of the plate. That's the important point to make, I think, Tom, that they're all nervous because they're all humans. At the start of the game, everybody in that field is nervous. The only person that might not be nervous would be Catfish Hunter. I just, I've never seen him get nervous on a baseball field. But everybody, all those kids out there have got to be nervous. They're not kids, all those professionals. It's just, it's in your blood. You work so long, you work all summer, you start in April, and here it is, World Series time. And there's just no way not to be nervous. Dullett has now fanned three of the four, uh, last four batters he's faced since his trouble in the top of the first inning. With all fastballs. A one ball, no strike pitch to Billy Russell, who had a triple his first time up, and a run batted in. Yogi Berra in the Yankee dugout. There's another guy that have a little trouble getting nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he just saw the camera. Now he's nervous. He That's still grins every time sure. he sees Don Newcomb. <laughs> Thinks of coming back. Yeah. Russell pops it high in the air foul out of play. And it's two and one on the Dodger shortstop. Let me tell you, Big Newt came back, Yogi Wood. As the meticulous little Southpaw's personality has infected this whole Dodger team, given them the spirited leadership that led them to that huge pennant victory over the Cincinnati Reds, who going into the season seemed invincible. He is an outright cheerleader. That's yeah, right. There isn't a thing wrong with having a few of them around the game of baseball. I'll tell you one thing, don't think that he doesn't love it here. He loves being on stage, and he loves 
center stage, and that's exactly where Tom Masorda is, right here in front of 55, some odd thousand people, millions watching on TV, and he loves every moment of it. He appeals to the umpire down the first baseline, and uh, he says no. That's my friend Ed Sudol, umpiring at first base tonight, one of the senior umpires in the National League. 21 years of service. 2-2. Russell hits it out into right center field. Mickey Rivers over for it. Got it. Two down. Batter now, Reggie Smith, the Dodger right fielder. As Thurman Munson has gone out halfway to the mound to have a visit with his pitcher, Don Gullett. The interesting thing about this Dodger team this year, Tom, has been the fact that they have not been as defensively proficient as usual. They're probably the best school team in baseball and fundamentals always have been, dating back to Mr. Ricky. Dodgers have always been a great organization in that sense, Howard. They right. Really stress fundamentals. And if there are times, I think it might be more of a mental lapse than anything else because physically they can do the job. But defensively, they have fallen apart at times. Especially in the playoff series. Reggie Smith walked his first time, caught in a run down between first and second. Gullet comes inside with the blazer, and Smith gets out in a hurry. This is the second World Series for Reggie Smith. He played with the Boston Red Sox in 1967 when he hit 250. But you go to Vero Beach and watch the Dodgers train. Boy, do they work the cutoff, the pickoff, the hit and run. Every aspect of baseball, every nuance, they work it to an icing. Hard shot left field. That's in front of Lou Pinella for a base hit. And so Reggie Smith is aboard with Ron Say coming up. One of the interesting things, as you know, Keith, about this Dodger team, a disciple of Mr. Ricky's, is the general manager, Al Campanis. Tommy, I don't know if you know this, but Campanis has all of Mr. Ricky's speeches on cartridges. And twice a year, he brings in Tommy Lasada to listen to them and other members of the Dodgers team, too. Well, this is the finest organization for fundamentals, and it doesn't make a difference how good your players are. If you don't do the fundamentals correctly, you're not going to win, and I think the Cincinnati Reds proved that to themselves this year. Mark Anderson has already told me that the spring training rolls around for his club in 1978. Right back to the basics, the basics of the game of baseball, rundowns and cutoffs and the very basic fundamentals of baseball. Ron Say with a sacrifice fly, first time up, looks, it's high and away with Reggie Smith on first base, and Smith can run. And the fundamentals for Sparky Anderson, Keith, were telling Tom, you'll get 38 starts at least next year. <laughs> That's what I've been told. <laughs> <laughs> All right, watch Reggie come off first base. Caught the first time he tried to move it. Ron Say hits it a mile high on the left side. It's hanging up there, and it now goes back into the crowd. And you got folks risking $500 suits for a $5 baseball. Your suit didn't cost nearly that. Did <laughs> Give it to me, as a matter of fact. <laughs> By Rude Arledge. This suit certainly don't cost $500. <laughs> Outfield pulled to the left. And Fenella, way back there, right close to 380 feet. With two out, Smith edging off first. And the pitch is high and away to Ron Say. In the outfield alignment, Vanilla well around to the left. Rivers pretty much straight away in center. Jackson straight away in right. Say's going to hit it out. He's going to have to pull it a little bit. He can take it to dead center, but remember it's 430 up the alley in left center here at Yankee Stadium. Count now three and one. I'm sitting there shaking my head, Keith. You don't win pitching to Steve Garvey and Reggie Smith and Ron Say, three and one and two and one. You just can't give him the chance. This guy is real strong. He can hit the ball out in that right field alley out there at 385. Just as easily as he can hit it over that 387 mark in left field. Took him outside and he lost him. So Ron Say walks to first base. Reggie Smith goes down to second base. 
And here comes Steve Garvey walking to the plate with two out and two Steve on. Garvey. Probably nobody the Dodgers would rather have up. Two men out, nobody on. Smith singling, then the walk. How to begin to awesome. dig a grave, perhaps. You're digging your own hole, Harold. That's the fourth walk yielded by Don Gullett in the ball game. He walked three at the top of the first inning, and the Dodgers jumped on him for two runs. The Dodgers lead two to one. And they're batting here in the top of the third. The pitch to Garvey. You can see from that statistic there, Steve Garvey's productive. That's how he got 115 runs across the plate. Oh, that one just almost sailed away from Thurman Munson. Really got loose from it. And it's two balls and no strikes. And Dusty Baker is on deck. He's throwing the ball so very, very hard, perhaps too hard. Trying to throw the ball too hard. That's why that last pitch is way out of the strike zone. 96 miles per hour was blocked at. Doesn't do any good if you don't throw it where you want it. You've got to get that ball down. He's got to throw the ball inside. Right there. Foul. Straight back. It's two and one on Steve Garvey. He was 2-0 on Reggie Smith, 3-1 on Ronnie Say. He's 2-1 and one now and just pitched 2-0 to him. And I get a lot of young pitchers, Keith, that come up to me and ask, what's the basic fundamentals? What should I do? I say, throw strikes and throw low strikes. You cannot pitch behind and pitch in the big leagues. At 2-1, and one, runners edge off. Harvey swings and misses, and it was power against power right there as Gullett just reached back and brought his best fastball to the plate at 94 miles an hour. It's he, two and two. He is really firing. Very consistent, 94, 5, and 6 right in that area. Reggie Smith at second base. Ron Say still over at first. How long can you throw at 94 miles an hour? If you're in shape, you can do it for nine innings. <laughs> That's happened to Sieber with his wrecking strikeouts. Outside and high, and it's full at three and two. So now the runners will check up and be going. Garvey will try to reload and be ready. And it's up to Gullet to try to hold it. Baker on deck. Baker has hit a grand slam in the National League playoffs against the Phillies in his only opportunity. With the bases loaded, he delivered, and Garvey hits it high and deep to center field. Rivers goes back. He's got room. He makes the catch. Garvey scared him, but they got him. Dodgers threaten, but still up empty at the top of the third inning after two and a half. Score remains. Dodgers two, the Yankees one. We'll go down to the bottom of the third inning for the Yankees in this telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball intended solely for the private non-commercial use of our audience, publication, reproduction, trans retransmission, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of Major League Baseball is prohibited. To the top of the order for the Yankees, Mickey Rivers, Willie Randolph, and Thurman Munson against Don Sutton in a two-to-one ball game. The Dodgers have the edge. You can see from those numbers that Mickey Rivers had a very productive championship series. Pesky fellow. Now you need to keep off the bases. If you want to beat the Yankees, just like Lopes for Los Angeles, and that's foul. It was really an amazing player down the stretch run. While people were quarreling throughout the American League as to who should be the most valuable player in the league, with a lot of deserved nods going, of course, to Carew, others to Cowan of Kansas City, this young man must be considered. Ball is punched to left. Baker's got him played just right. Dusty makes the catch, one out. So, Don Sutton has to breathe a sigh of relief not to have the speedster on first base, and here comes Willie Randolph for the plate, who grounded out Ron Say in his first time up, back in the first inning. Willie's second series. And he takes a strike. In game number five of the playoff against Kansas City, 
Willie went one for three and the run batted in and that sacrifice fly drove in the winning run hitting second in the order in the big ball game and that's fouled away upstairs. The thing Herman about Nelson. Randolph Tom is that he's a great athlete. He can hit run field and throw. He has the habit of not spiking a rally which is just what Keith was saying in effect when he brought attention to the fact he knocked in the winning run. Two strike count on Randolph and it's low. He's a typical player out of the Pittsburgh Pirate organization. Howard He's a free swinger. He really hacks at the ball hits the ball back through the middle very aggressive at the plate and runs very well. Got it. Got him looking letter high. Second strike up for Don Sutton. Sutton seems to settle down here a little bit. Really has. He's retired six in a row. Seems in command. Good control. He's getting the ball where he wants to get it now. He got down the lower end of the lineup in the bottom half of inning number two and got three easy outs there. And that I think that settled him down quite a bit. He developed confidence when we assigned him to the Little League World Series. <laughs> Through hitless ball against the youngsters. Yeah, he went, he caught that helicopter and ran to a charter and flew home and the next day won a ball game. That's went right. Thurman Munson up for the Yankees with the bases empty and two out of Sutton curves him outside. Reggie Jackson is in the on deck circle for New York. There's a strike. It's one and one. As Reggie chewing on his seeds and waiting. This is pitcher's delight right here, Keith. Thurman Munson up, two outs and nobody on base. That's when you want to face this kind of hitter. <laughs> That's right. Foul out of play. Sutton has the edge at one and two. He's the kind of hitter that is much tougher. You put a man down there at second base, or a fellow over there on third base with one out, he can hit a sacrifice fly. He's extremely tough in those situations. Much better hitter in that in that spot. Knocked in an even hundred runs in 1977. One two pitch. Got him. Little foul tip. Steve Yeager holds. And so the Yankees are going in order in the bottom of the third inning. And our score remains Dodgers two, the Yankees one. As we move down to the top of the fourth inning in this opening game of the 1977 World Series at Yankee Stadium, Dusty Baker stands in to lead off for the Dodgers. Glenn Burke on deck, Steve Yeager in the hole, and Dusky is the batting case tonight set. As he takes a pitch on the outside corner, I'm ready to all one. <laughs> Had a great year. And a grand slam against the Phillies. And it's foul. It's one and one. Oh, it's, it's excuse me, it's two strikes. Glenn Burke into the on deck circle. Who had his first at bat in the World Series a little while ago probably has calmed some of the butterflies in him but no man alive could have been more excited than this youngster right here and the man at the plate Dusty Baker. They were 40 feet in the air and that pitch is way outside from Don Gullett and now it's two and two. Keith, he's got to be one happy man. He had a fine year at the plate 291 30 home runs and 86 RBIs. Last year, his first year with the Dodgers came over there, hit 242. He had only four home runs and 39 RBIs. He's Correct the count at one and two on Dusty Baker. Gullet again comes high and away, and now it's two and two. It seems that perhaps Gullet doesn't, when he loses that pitch high and away, he really doesn't finish it. Seems to be pulling away. Arm doesn't come all the way through. At two and two to Baker. Oh, ouch. Hit him. That's a 96 mile an hour fastball right in the thigh, I think. Says ouch. he's all right. Another look at it. No. Wow, right in the ribcage. Rib yeah. 
as a glancing blow as Dusty was pulling away. Otherwise, he might really have been hurt by it. I think Baker reflects this old Dodger team this year. Give them an inch, they'll take a mile. They find a way to beat you. Never more reflected than in that game last Friday against the Phils when they seemed hopelessly beaten. One strike to go on Manny Mota. Instead, the Dodgers rested the victory. Never mind the Philadelphia mistake. Somehow, the Dodgers forced them and take advantage of them. Now the youngster, Glenn Burke, who struck out swinging back in the second inning. Swings and misses again. Two to one. Dodgers lead the Yankees. Dodgers scored two in the top of the first. Yankees got one back in the bottom of the first. Since then, the pitchers have owned the ball game. Right now, Don Gullett having a little bit of trouble with his control again. He hit Baker. And Burke hits it up the middle for Mickey Rivers. Plenty of room for Mickey. He makes the catch. Baker will come back to first. As we pan out to center field, you'll see part of the history and tradition of this magnificent ballpark. The monuments. Lou Gehrig, Commerce High School, La Bronx, New York Yankees, Old Iron Horse, Miller Huggins, the indomitable little manager who had his fracases with that man, the babe, George Herman Root. At the plate, Steve Yeager. With one out. Dusty Baker on first base for the Dodgers. Yeager hits it on the ground toward Willie Randolph. It's a slow number. Yeager's quicker than you might think for a catcher, but good play by Willie Randolph as Dusty Baker moves to second. You see a fine defensive play there by Willie Randolph. Done a fine job for the Yankees all year long, so I'm told. We'll see it in the replay. I don't see these guys during the year. But he makes a fine play. That's the kind of play that you've got to make if you're going to win the American League pennant. Even with a runner running right in front of him, a good flip to Chambliss and got him by a step and a half. Nicely done, Tom, because the vision wasn't bad by the runner. Now you've got two out. You've got Don Sutton, the pitcher, up with Dusty Baker at second base. And Sutton lays it down. Gullis got to field it. He flips it underhanded, and it's just in time. Well, they'll try almost anything to beat you. Don Sutton, the pitcher, almost beats out a punt, but doesn't work, and the score remains 2-1, to one, Dodgers. Preceding a message on behalf of Major League Baseball. You're looking at Dodger catcher Steve Yeager, that extra piece of equipment hanging down from the bottom of the face mask. A year ago, a piece of broken bat went into his neck and severely injured him. Well... As a result of that and being hit by various shrapnel around home plate, including foul balls that sometimes come back under and hit you in that Adam's apple in the throat area, the Dodgers put that piece of equipment together for Steve Yeager, and he's worn it ever since. And others are beginning to pick it up. That's right, and they should, because it is needed. Reggie Jackson will lead off for the New York Yankees now in the bottom of the fourth inning to be followed by Chris Chambliss and Greg Nettles Jackson and Chambliss at back-to-back -back singles back in the first inning. So Reggie up facing Don Sutton. The score two to one Dodgers. Strike one. That single that Jackson had off the thumbs checked swing and it still looped over Russell's head in the short center field. Low. One and one. 286 average on the year. Did what he said he was going to do. Got his 30 plus home runs and got his 100 plus RBI. Exploded the last six weeks of the season. The runs came in bunches. That's high and tight. Don Sutton in the MVP All Star game this year pitched the first three innings of the game. Walked one, struck out four. He gave a single in that ball game to Reggie Jackson. Crowd is chanting, Red G, Red G. High pop on the left side for Ron Say. Fair territory, and Reggie's gone. One out. However, Reggie is not beguiled by the current approving roars of the crowd. He has heard other kinds of roars. He heard it when he came out tonight, too, Howard. Sutton has jammed that man twice tonight. He's pitched him soft stuff away and hard stuff in. 
That pitch is low to the Yankee first baseman Chris Chambliss who knocked in New York's run back in the first inning. And Chris has been overdue. He's a better hitter than he showed I think during the series against Kansas City. Very steady fellow. Pitch is high. There you go. One for 17 against the Royals. Wasn't the same hitter that he was a year ago against the Royals. There's a strike. Two balls and one strike now with one out and nobody on for the Yankees in the bottom of the fourth inning. The Dodgers leading two to one. Matter of fact, Keith, Chris will be the first to tell you he didn't think he had a good year. Yeah, that's right. High fly ball out into short center. Davey Lope circles back to make the play. No way that Glenn Burke's going to get to that ball. He had gone very deep in right center for Shambliss and Lopes. A long way to go. Ran it down. And here's Nettles with the damaged shoulder. Doubt at the outset as to whether or not he'd start. Let's take a close look at Greg and see if that shoulder is bothering his swing in your opinion, Tom. I talked to Greg uh, yesterday. It was either in the collision that he had in the championship series or when he was throwing a punch at George Brett that somebody grabbed his arm. He doesn't quite know sure uh, how he did hurt his shoulder. I never saw a ball player could fight. <laughs> 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 Once there was one who thought he was a professional fighter, Don Hope. And over at Ebbets Field, he challenged Clem Levine. They fought under the stands, and Hope got knocked out for the third time. <laughs> Ball is pulled over to Steve Garvey. Sutton comes in to cover it, and out Don Sutton has retired 10 Yankees in a row. And after four innings of play, here in this opening game of the World Series, the Dodgers beat the Yankees 2-1. to one. Now we go to the Dodgers, top of the order. Davy Lopes, Bill Russell, and Reggie Smith. Davy Lopes in the ball game has walked and scored and struck out looking. There's a pitch on the inside corner. That's the pitch the Mr. Seba likes, Keith. That's the pitch he likes to throw. Tight, knee high, inside corner. It warms my heart to see a pitcher get that ball up there about 94 and 95 miles an hour, right down about knee level. What a pity you can't do it more often. <laughs> <laughs> foul. At that time, it's fouled off Nestor Shylock, the umpire, and Nestor wobbled around a little on that one, didn't he? Said he'd quit eating supper, been going to bed uh, hungry, and uh, he looks lean and hard, and he's been around for 24 years. Well, I don't know how Jim Dale at third base feels. He flew the red eye back from L.A. Sunday night with me. We had a mechanical, got off three hours late, and he staggered off the plane at 10 <laughs> o'clock Monday morning. Oh, Lopes fouls it off, goes down in the Yankee dugout. Bill Russell is waiting on deck, the Dodger shortstop. Number two behind a, a guy who likes to run like a Davey Lopes, the toughest that position you can possibly have. Russell has handled it well. One and two now, the count on David Oaks. Hits it toward the hole. Greg Nettles cuts it off, and they just get it. If they leave the ball go to Bucky Dent, they never get it. It is Nettles who made the play and got his man. He made a fine play here, Keith, going into the left. Greg has really made himself an outstanding third baseman. It was his right shoulder that's been injured, and if it's going to be hurt, it's going to be, you'll be able to tell it on that play. Lopes, of course, gets the first base, as well as anybody, any right-hand hitter in the league. Got him by half a step. Now Bill Russell, who has tripled the knock in a run. And Gullet is outside and away. The Dodgers were the first of the four division winners to clinch this year. They did it back on September 20. They were also the only division winner didn't win 100 games. But they're also the only team among the four division winners that came out of the starting gate like a runaway horse. They year. really did. They had a spectacular first half of the season. That's when they clinched the pennant. Two and one now to Billy Russell. Not even Tom, despite his 21 and six year, can get the Reds back into the thick of things. 22 and 4 they were at the start of the season. That's an outstanding start. It's going to be difficult for anybody to catch a team that gets out of the box like that. 
Russell hits it hard down the left field line. Vanilla going back to the track, and he's got it. Very quickly, folks, one day after the failure of the Soviet space mission, the American space program faces a crucial test. ABC News will have exclusive live coverage of the flight of the space shuttle tomorrow morning, 11.30 Eastern Time. The space shuttle orbiter flies without its protective tail cone, duplicating an actual re-entry from space. The Soviet failure, by the way, Keith, as you know, is due to a malfunction in the docking system. Batter up now is Reggie Smith for the Dodgers. For the walk and a single. Dodgers hitting in the top of the fifth inning and leading the Yankees two to one. A lot of offense in the first inning has been all pitching ever since between Sutton and Gullet. And Gullet blows the fastball past Reggie Smith for a one and one count. And no small wonder Reggie didn't get a piece of it because he threw it at 94 miles an hour again. Gullet is throwing a zip from out of space. Another re emphasis about. The American space program. If this test is successful, it's a major boost for the United States space program. If it fails, as the Russians fail, today a space shuttle in 79 is in serious doubt. And that's foul ball out of play. Remember, 11:30 to noon tomorrow, an ABC News special. Don Gullett, rub it on a new baseball now with a count of one and two on Reggie Smith. Don's a country boy, grew up farm down near Lynn, Kentucky. He did the usual work around the farm. In between, he went out and played all the sports he could, including striking out 20 out of 21 one day in a baseball game. The old country boys have a habit of coming up raw-boned and strong, and he's now got a count of two and two. He's not finessing either. I mean, he's, there's uh, Billy Martin in the Yankee dugout. He's just flat throwing his fastball up there. His curveball, see, he's not getting his curveball over, and he's really not getting an off-speed pitch over. It's just fastball. That's just a low fastball in the dirt. Full count now. Three balls and two strikes. Reggie Smith, as you look at Don Gullett, laboring out there. Smith hit him for a single last time up, walked the previous time. And as I noted at the very top of the telecast, Reggie Smith, on the record could probably be considered the third best switch hitter in baseball history behind only Mantle and Rose. Still, he's had an in-and-out career. He was unhappy in Boston for a wide variety of reasons. Said some of them were sociological. 3-2 pitch. Quick three ball. So Don Gullett's blazing fastball gets Smith looking, and the score remains 2-1 to one at the halfway point. We go down to the bottom of the fifth inning with a score two to one. And you can see the Dodgers have had only two hits. The Yankees have had three hits off Don Sutton. And Don Gullett, after that rocky first inning, has really settled down. But then so has Sutton because he has retired ten in a row. And he's going to be pitching now to the bottom third of the order for New York. Lou Pinella, Bucky Dent, and Don Gullett. And the cries of Lou infect the stadium. Breaking pitch is in for strike one to Pinella. The Needler. He's always got something going in the clubhouse. And the Yankees have needed some light moments during the course of the summer. Yeah. Foul. And very quickly, it's two strikes. Don Gullett rests in the Yankee dugout. Sutton ahead, 0 and 2 to Pinella. Outfield straight away for him. And Don comes outside. That's the real scrap iron, Keith. Right yeah, there. Just that's, right. that's what catchers do in the dugout when they're not hitting. <laughs> they rest. They never won a beauty contest. I can <laughs> <tell you> that. <laughs> He's a good one. Vanilla now comes away from the plate. Sutton takes time. Again, the umpires, Nestor Shylock behind the plate. Ed Sudol at first, Larry McCoy second, Jerry Dale at third, down the line and left with Jim Evans and John McSherry down the line and right. 
And starting to make a little noise now, trying to pump up the Yankees. As Sutton delivers to Pinello, he hits a shot. Foul. That's really the first time anybody has pulled Sutton with authority. That was a shot. He threw that right in Lou's groove. It's known as the wheelhouse in the clubhouse. The wheelhouse. The wheelhouse. It's called the wheelhouse. Yes. Yeah. But if you're going to do this, which get the club, right terminology. Which house was that, <laughs> Did you clear that? With, the what? Uh, with your former clubhouse? Yeah, the, no, that's the contemporary clubhouse. And with the press? It's nice when, that's nice when it goes foul. <laughs> <laughs> now the restless crowd grows rather quiet again as Penella comes back with a count of one ball and two strikes. 34 years of age, having one of his best seasons. the scoring coming in the very first inning. The pitchers have controlled the ball game since that time. Talking about rain late tonight and tomorrow morning. Expected to be clear for tomorrow night. Though a bit cooler. Second game of the 1977 World Series. Vanilla swings and misses and strikes out. Eight o'clock tomorrow night with James Catfish Hunter scheduled to go for the New York Yankees and Bert Hooten for the Los Angeles Dodgers. So don't bet your mortgage on it. Hooten can be very, very tough. Yes, he can. He blew up on a what he felt was a very bad call in that game last Friday against the Phils. And Lucky dead up there now. Takes ball one. First time I've seen him lose control of himself that way, and he wound up walking four straight batters. Tommy had no choice but to get him out of there. Up the middle, base hit. For Bucky Dent. Almost called that too soon. Almost <laughs> 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 out of there. <laughs> that is the fourth base hit in the ball game for the Yankees. And watch here how close Davy Lopes comes to climbing up and pulling it down. Looked like it had plenty of carry on it to get into center, but now watch Lope. He doing his rendition of a split end, end there. He looks like a split end for the L.A. Rams on that play. But he is laid down by Gullet. Garvey plays to Lope. That's and a pretty good athlete right there, Don Gullet. You see Dent down at second base, sacrificed by Don Gullet. Gullet, I said earlier, was a fine athlete, all-around athlete. He made a good play on Don Sutton's butt, getting him, in, him out at first. He hasn't bunted all year because of the designated hitter in the American League, and that's a perfect bunt right there. And it sends the base runner, Bucky Dent, up to second base with Mickey Rivers coming to the plate. And deep for the other team, here's the little pet, the man who ignites the ball club, the man who got the big hit against Kansas City in the final game in the ninth inning with occasional power, 11 home runs on the air. He fooled you a lot of ways, this Rivers. Sutton comes low. Rivers had two runs batted in in the playoff series against Kansas City. And in that important fifth ball game, when he went two for five, he delivered the tying run. So he works all right with pressure on him. 
Foul. And it's one and one with two out and Bucky Dent leading off second base for New York. Ron Say is giving him the third base foul line, the very area of Rivers loves. If Sutton pitches him outside, Tom, you see it there. You might see Mickey try and chop it in either over Say's head or past it. Much different than the way the Reds play him last year. Rose is right down on his throat last year at third base. This year, third baseman Ron Say playing way back. And the count goes to two and one as Don Sutton's breaking pitch got away and was high. See how much Randy Say is off the line at third. He is off the line and well behind the bag at third base. Two one pitch. Ball is hit hard to right field and it is right into the glove of Reggie Smith. And so the inning is over. After five complete innings, our score remains Dodgers two, Yankees one. Back with more baseball after this word from our local station. There's the line score in the ball game. Los Angeles two runs on two hits, cashed in because of uh, three walks issued by Don Gullett. The Yankees now with four hits, but only one run. I might also point out the Yankees are in this series with 24 players. The commissioner's office refusing the Yankees the privilege of activating Dell Alston for the 25th position. Don Sutton has been dominant for the Los Angeles Dodgers since that first inning, and certainly Don Gullett has done the same for the New York Yankees, and Gullett is out there right now. And Don Gullett will be pitching to Ron Say, Steve Garvey, Dusty Baker, Hart of the Dodger batting order. And he's in for the breaking pitch for strike one. One of, the, one of the few, excuse me, Howard, one of the few curveballs he's gotten over. Well, it's thrown 82 pitches already, only through the fifth inning. Fastball is hit a mile in the air. Lou Pinella going back, and right in front of the wall at 387 feet, as you can see, he makes the catch. That almost got in there. In the old Yankee Stadium dimensions, what a beautiful picture of the Statue of Liberty. Live picture. Under the, un, no, that, I was about to say that in the old stadium, the distance was a little further at that point, which enabled John Frito in 47 to make the catch on DiMaggio. It used to be 401 feet out. Garvey lays one down, and he'll beat it out. No chance to play, Steve Garvey. As he lays down the buck for the base hit, and he's on with his first safety of the night. Watch this bunt. Laid perfectly. Didn't get it on the grass. The infield slopes a little more here. Or third than it does in a lot of places. But getting it out on the grass, the ball just laid there as soft as a feather as it rolled along. And there wasn't a thing in the world that Greg Nettles could do about it. Nettles playing way back there. It wasn't an easy piece of bunt. Curveball. But the Dodgers know they take advantage of that. You see Greg playing way back there. Steve can run very well. That's the point about the Dodgers, fundamentals, and the ability to take advantage. Take advantage when uh, the opposition will give you an opening. Go ahead and take it. Dusty Baker now. Here in the top of the sixth inning with Darby off first, and Baker hits it high in the air, and Munson comes back, but he has no play. Also might uh, bring up a subject that was a little touchy during the course of the season, the use of walkie-talkies in communicating with Gene Michaels and Clyde King upstairs and placing uh, the defensive positions for the New York Yankees in the playoff series had a couple of uh, retired umpires, Hank Soar and John Stevens, in the respective dugouts. Did you see who was here when we got here tonight? Clyde King. Yeah, That's I'm exactly what he's doing. He's yep. placing the outfielders with a walkie-talkie. That's foul up in the crowd out of play, and Elston Howard, they're, they're probably talking on the phone upstairs to uh, King or uh, Gene Michaels, but there is no umpire in the dugout. The reason the umpire was put in that dugout, or the monitor, in a sense, of what he was, was they wouldn't be stealing signs. But they found out it didn't make any difference anyhow, and by the time you got the information relayed down, it was too late, so there is no umpire required, or no monitor required in the dugouts in the World Series. Phew, I'm sorry I brought it up. <laughs> you don't think they try to steal sides, <laughs> do That's why they don't have flashcards. <laughs> One and two. 
Tommy, after a gullet, has pitched to Dusty Baker. I want to talk to you about the scouting that goes on of the opposition teams in, prep in preparation for the World Series and how effective it is or isn't. A one-two pitch coming to Dusty Baker as Garvey comes off first base and the pitch is up high and outside and it's two and two. He's still throwing hard at 94 miles an hour, but as Tom told you, coming into the, this inning, he had thrown the ball to the plate 82 times. 82 times, probably 10 more times this inning. He's probably up about 92, and Don is not a complete game pitcher. He only had seven complete games this year. The most he ever had as a Cincinnati Red was 10. He's high again, and it's full at 3 and 2. Garvey will be going. I think Billy Martin will be very happy if he can get seven innings out of it. And if he does pitch seven innings, he'll be up there right around 120 pitches, especially with a tender shoulder. No question about it. And if Baker gets on, you'll see some very quick stirrings in the Yankee bullpen. Pedro has been the man who's already been up twice. But at this point in the game, they might consider someone else. Nobody there now. However, it's quiet. Both ten. Dodger then has moved all night. Garvey goes. Baker swings. High fly ball. Out of the right center field. And it looked like it might be a little Alphonse Gaston for a moment between Reggie Jackson and Mickey Rivers. And finally, Mickey called and made the catch. With the experiences that Jackson's had in right field this year, I think most Yankee fans would consider it felicitous for Rivers to take the ball. It was a pop fly to right center of the championship series, and Mickey came over and called Reggie off, and Reggie backed right off. Reggie knows that, uh, that Mickey is the right, field hit. general in center field, and he does corral the outfielder. He is in charge out there. Glenn Burke now up. With two out and Steve Garvey at first base, having bunted his way aboard for the third hit of the night for the Dodgers. Dodgers have three, the Yankees have four hits. Dodgers have two runs, the Yankees have one. Burke swings and misses. Glenn has struck out swinging and hit a fly ball to center. Now, Tommy, we had a long talk with Don Sutton yesterday about scouting reports. What were your ex uh, respective opinions? Well, every club's going to get a scouting report on teams in the other league, even teams in your own league. And I think for a professional of Sutton's stature, you're not going to change your game plan as a as a pitcher going to the mound. You want to know. You want to know what a hitter's strength is. Where where is his strong point? Where does he like the ball? And where is his most vulnerable point? Those are really the only two things that a pitcher can use when he does uh, go to the mound. Another thing that that the scouting reports do really is defensive alignment. That's probably the most important thing that you can get from a scouting report. Very good. Thank you. Two strike count now on Glenn Burke. And that one's outside. If you have, if you have any other questions that you don't know anything about, uh, you just feel free oh to God. ask me. <laughs> what I got a kick out of was Sutton saying to us, the Don report says he can't hit a hard inside knee-high pitch. He said, how do they know whether or not I can throw it? <laughs> Who can do it? <laughs> That's right. Burke hits a foul out of play. Sutton's comments was a good hard fastball inside, followed up with a curve just off the plate, down and away at the knees. <laughs> they haven't invented anybody hits those pitches yet. Burke the batter, two out. Garvey at first base. Dodgers leading two to one. Steve Yeager on deck. There's the base runner, Steve Garvey. Perfect month to get aboard. Don Sutton resting as quietly as possible, visiting with somebody in the Dodger dugout. These two pitchers really took this ball game to the throat after that first inning. Not much has happened. Garvey goes, and the ball is punched to the right side, and it goes into right field for a base hit. And Garvey goes on around second and goes into third. He's coming to the plate. Here's the throw. It is. Oh, Close play. And that'll get some conversation out of the Dodgers dugout. I'll guarantee you. Good aggressive play there, Keith. The umpire was out of position in my estimation. He was up the line instead of waiting at home plate. Now you watch as, he, as Garvey comes in, he gets the, the goal from Preston Gomez. Going in, you'll see the umpire getting back to home plate yet still trying to make the call. Look at the umpire, he's up the line. What's he doing up there? Here he comes, he's not even in the picture. Where is he? That's telling it like it is. So it is still two to one. Here we go now to the bottom of the sixth inning. 
Willie Randolph, Thurman Munson, and Reggie Jackson. We're going to show you that play again at home plate. One more look at it now as the play, the throw comes in from Mickey Rivers. And from that angle, it looks like Garvey was on the plate. It sure did. That pitch is just low, and it's one and one. And one more look at it. And so far, going to be talking about it tomorrow. This is the third angle of it. Can't see home plate there, though. Two balls and no strikes. And Randolph swings and misses. It's two and one. And that play at home plate got the crowd buzzing. Garvey's not a guy to argue either. He, he argues when he thinks he's right. Yeah, but the point you made about position is everything. Position is everything for an official. In 1955, when Jackie Robinson stole home, let's watch this pitch. Two and one. Two and two. When Jackie stole home on Yogi Berra in the fifth game of the series, Berra's whole claim was that the umpire was out of position. Umpire and never moved. Didn't see him make the tag. Hard shot, left side, way back. It is gone. Home run, Randolph. The score is tied at 2-2. That's the fine young athlete we were telling you about. Who Tom Seaver characterized as a typical Pittsburgh Pirate Palm product. He was obtained a year ago, as we look at this again, in one of Gabe Paul's many trades that re-architectured the Yankees. On Sutton did not want to throw that pitch. You don't get two strikes. Two and two on hitter, throw the ball up there, and that's the kind of he's the kind of hitter you want to keep the ball down, make him hit the ball on the ground, make him hit the fly ball to right field. Debris, this few debris has arrived at the ballpark. Well, we're in the bottom of the sixth, and this game has proved out to be everything we expected it to be up to this point. A typical Yankee Dodger struggle consistent with the whole long history of eight prior World Series between these two teams. Thurman Munson now comes to the plate. Nobody out. Randolph hitting the home run about 320 feet down the left field line. To even it at two and two. Munson hits it on the ground to Davey Lopes. The gravy bounce for Davey and he throws him out. So that's one of them. Sure, the home run again. Here's Randolph. Sutton wants that pitch back. And I tell you, he knew it was gone, too. Pitchers, is, they throw pitches like that, and there's a certain sound, a ring that comes off of that bat. You know it's gone. Now it is Reggie Jackson at the plate as we finish the replay of the home run trot of Willie Randolph, but here's Reggie. Willie's got to practice his home run trot. He doesn't get to do that. No. <laughs> at this moment, Joe Lasorda is doubtless thinking back to that call at home plate on Garvey. There he is right there. I'm sure what he's thinking. Not very happy. Just inside of the hand. Two balls and no strikes, and that's where you want to go to Jackson if you're going to get it. Just throw it into his hand. Hard stuff up and in and soft stuff away if you're going to pitch for Reggie. Foul. Wow. Off stuff away. That's a changeup. Sutton showed me something. He gives up a home run, ties up the ball game, comes back with Thurman Munson up, Munson up to the plate. Him a good curveball. They came back with a pitch. very good pitch. And that's, you know, that's a guy that keeps his cool on the mound, and that's a real professional. Man's had five one hitters in the course of his career. One his year. pitcher in Dodger pitching history. Los Angeles Dodgers. Proud roaring red G. The pitch is inside, and he hit him. Jackson just nipped on the left forearm. And the way he's acting, I think it just caught the sleeve. Probably didn't even hit the arm. As you can see, trying to pitch him in, inside, just caught the left forearm. So right, Jackson right. the ball, the ball looked like it sailed in on him. You got to pitch the hard stuff up and in on Reggie. He's a big bat, he's got a big swing. You don't want to let him extend his arms. The ball looked like it sailed on Sutton a little bit. Now here's trouble, Chris Shambler with one out. Jackson on first, and the pitch, ball one. So Don Sutton running into a rough moment here. Guys are moving around in the Dodger dugout, left center field. And in the bullpen, 
Yes, sir. In the bullpen. There's the catcher out. Here comes the pitcher trotting out to start cranking up. In the bottom of the sixth inning, the Yankees getting a run on Randolph's home run. They got Munson on the ground after Lopes. Then he hit Reggie Jackson. With one out, Reggie off first to pitch. Low and away. The two ball, no strike count to Chris Chandler. Greg Nettles is on deck. I don't think he's getting tired, Keith. I mean, he threw only 65. Lance Robson, uh, left-hander. He's he might be a very important fellow in this series, Tom, because of the left-handed. He's the only left-hander they've got down there. Elias Sosa is the right-hander cranking up. Ball is hit hard to right field. Reggie Smith is right there. Well, Reggie Jackson nailed it, but he hit it right at Reggie Smith. I didn't say Reggie Jackson. Uh, Chris Chambliss and Jackson. When Reggie Jackson heard the crack of the bat, he was gone, and then he stopped. He took two hard shots at second base, and then he just stopped because he could see that Reggie Smith hadn't moved, and uh, he knew that he had to come back. Pitch out. Tom Masorda doing a little coaching. Now it's two Probably out. In the dugout. I'll tell you this, though. The, uh, in the last two innings, Don Sutton, they have stung the ball. I don't. Uh, I don't really. I don't really think he's getting tired. Key 65 pitches, as I said, and, and he only had nine complete games this year. But it's a cool night. He's been pitching well lately. Pitched very well in the playoffs. That ball Rivers hit back in the last inning was hit on the nose, and Randolph hit one on the nose, and that one was hit on the nose by Chandler. Jackson off first. Two ball, no strike count now. Elias Sosa and Lance Robson in the Dodger bullpen. Reggie Jackson at first base. Billy Martin, not a manager who watches people running on their own. They go when he tells them. And Sutton goes to first to chase Reggie back. Greg Nettles in the on deck. High fly ball to right center field. And I was just about to say that when Greg Nettles was waiting in the on deck circle, you knew he was going to go fishing for a second fastball. He got it, but not quite enough of it. And so it's all even after six and two two. On the left, that is Mrs. Tommy John, Mrs. Reggie Smith. And just to Mrs. Smith's left, to your right, that's to Mrs. Steve Barbie. And, and Mrs. Mrs. Bird, Bird Houghton deserves a nod, too. All the Dodger wives who could make the trip are all seated together and anxious now as the Dodgers come to the plate in the top of the seventh inning with Steve Yeager, Don Sutton, and Davy Lopes. And Don Sutton is in the on deck circle. The Dodgers, two runs on four hits. And Steve Yeager hits a high pop that comes back out of play. The Dodgers in the ball game so far have stranded only five base runners. And there's Mrs. Sutton. She seems at ease. <laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover. Can't see you. In a 2-2 ball game in Yankee Stadium. I think she's heard those line drives the last few hitters have been getting off a of dunk. That pitch is outside from Don Gullett to Steve Yeager, and the count on the Dodger catcher now is two and one. If Gullett does get in trouble here, Keith, I think you'll see some action in the Yankee bullpen. He's up to about 100 pitches now. That's a high pop. Chambliss and Munson looking at it. Chris has a beat on it, and Chambliss makes the catch right in front of the Yankee dugout. Well, that's one down. And the Dodger pitcher will hit. Don Sutton coming to the plate. I must say, in perspective, that battered Yankee pitching staff appears to have been resuscitated by the reemergence of Mr. Gullet. Well, he's done more than just what he's done today, Howard. I mean, he's really helped. He helps everybody. He helps the guys sitting out there in the bullpen. Gives them a rest so they don't have to use two or three or four pitchers today. Now, he's done what, what Martin has wanted him to do. He's, got, he's in the seventh inning now and very strong. And that makes Billy very happy. 
Sutton swings and misses. Strike one. It looks like he's getting tired of me, doesn't he? He is bringing it up there. I only disagree with him on one thing. Martin won't be happy until he gets a lead <laughs> run. That's high. Gullet appearing in the World Series of 70, 72, 75, and 76 with an earned run average of 2.72 over those years and those appearances. All oh, ball strike. One and two. That was and an American Marks There's Billy. With all the pitches he's thrown, Tom, he's still well over 90 miles per hour. Oh, very well. There was Billy. You saw him still signaling at Greg Nettles that he's still bunt with Mike Bunt with two strikes. Something to do anything at that bat. He likes to talk about his hitting and his golf. Pretty good golfer. 2-2 two -two count on him now. Pretty good showbiz guy. Excellent mimicry. Good sense of humor. And a real good curveball. <laughs> Which helps. Cool cat, though. Been to the well a lot of times. If we get a foul ball up here, are you going to catch it or am I going to catch it? Not me. I'm usually getting handed a pretzel, so I get hit <laughs> in the chest. I got the same guy up there from Bowie Kuhn's office who was responsible for my last mishap. Two two pitch. Just misses. Three and two. Now here's the kind of a moment that causes a manager to get to mumbling under his breath and particularly a pitching coach a little bit because here he's gone to three and two on the opposing pitcher. Lou Pinello's playing him deep in left field too. Now he comes in a couple of steps and he walked him. What do you have to say to yourself when you walk to your other pitcher? Can't tell you, Keith. <laughs> when we go to commercial, I'll tell you. <laughs> that's, that's an unprintable up here. In the meantime, Mrs. Sutton smiles gleefully. Five bases on balls issued by Don Gullett in the ball game. Now he's got to work with the top of the Davey order. Davy Lopes, Bill Russell in the on deck circle. One out. Sutton off first, shook off the jacket, didn't want it. It's comfortable. Oh, swings and misses on the breaking pitch. It surprises me, Sutton at first base, not wearing a jacket, and he's pitching in short sleeves. He's got his wool shirt just to his elbows. It's not warm out there. I mean, it's 60 degrees. Dick Tedro is yep. now up again in the Yankee bullpen. Lopes beats it on the ground, and it's foul. And lucky for the Yankees, it was. Ball stays fair. Mr. Lopes is across first base. Davy Lopes, the jitterbugger, who will do anything in the world to get that pitcher to looking at him and moving around. Do anything in the world for Tommy Lasorda, I'll tell you that. Sir. Tommy managed him in the minors. He was an outfielder. And it was Tommy who knew he'd never make it as an outfielder. Insufficient batting power. Moved him to the infield. And that's where Lopes found a whole career. Monty Vasco, the man that honed Russell and Lopes into a fine middle defense combination. And Junior Gilliam. And the pitch is low. One ball and two strikes today. Billy Russell waiting in the on-deck circle to dodge a shortstop. Number two man in the order. They're playing Lopes straight away. Maybe a little more room in right center. Not holding Sutton. Lopes swings and misses back out. That's two down for Don Gullett. And Keith, up comes Mr. Russell, who got the big triple down the left center alley in the first inning. Player you have to admire. He's not the soundest shortstop in the business. Had the ball stuck in his glove on an apparent double play in that big game against the Phillies last Friday. Kept the Phillies alive. They went ahead. But it was Russell who got the game winning hit in the ninth. Bounces the ball. Greg Nettle steps back to make the play. Goes the short way to force Sutton to second base. And the inning is over. 
So in the middle of the seventh inning, we're all even. The Dodgers two and the Yankees two. There's the money man in the New York bullpen beginning to warm up now as we go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Sparky Lyle is now loosening in the Yankee pen. What a year he's had. He's another one of those guys that figures he can come out and get you out any way he can. There's Peter, o Peter O'Malley, who is the chief operating officer of the Los Angeles Dodger baseball operation now. Dad Walter, the man who moved the team from Brooklyn to Los Angeles, made such an enormous success of it out there. You would bring that up. Thank you. <laughs> it was like that's that's having you sit on a thorn. Right. That's a bright <laughs> young gentleman, though, Peter. That, that, that man right there got over 2,900,000 people to go to his ballpark this right. year. They had some attendance at the gate. I will tell you this from long experience. One can grow malleable under Mr. Walter O'Malley's suasion. Uh, on the behalf of uh, us, uh, us Americans, I agree what was it you just said? <laughs> <laughs> Lou Pinella, Bucky Dent, and then the pitcher, Don Gullett. And the first pitch from Don Sutton is ball one to Pinella. Lou tonight has hit a fly ball to center field and struck out swinging. One and one. That was a high fastball. Thrown at roughly 87 miles an hour. Don Gullett in the Yankee dugout resting. He's thrown a lot of pitches, but as we saw in the last inning, still able to bring it with authority. Punch to right field. It'll drop. Reggie Smith over, picks it up. Base going, for Pinelli. He's going. going for two. They've done it. Oh! A single and thrown out. Reggie Smith to Bill Russell. You're taking a chance on running on running one of the best arms in baseball. Reggie Smith in right field has got a gun. I mean, he has got a gun. That's perfect throw. Good aggressive base running, but I think our hitter, when he leaves that batter's box, has got to know who's throwing from the outfield. He did that the other night in Kansas City, though, and got away with it. He did, but here, while Tom said it was good aggressive base running, Pinella hesitated as he turned first, took another look, and only then decided to go to second. He is not a runner with basic foot speed, so he made a very human mistake of judgment. There he is. Gasp. Even. That's, that's a goat or hero. You know, if he makes it, he's a hero. If he doesn't make it, he's a goat. Batter is Bucky Dent with one out, and it's a strike. Let me say, does not run like a fellow named Juan Torina. Oh. Juan Torina can't hit a curveball. How do you know? <laughs> <laughs> Dent swings and misses for strike two. I have a feeling that Juan Torina might be able to do almost anything. If yeah, he he put might. It you know, he might. <laughs> when, when Keith and I watched him at Montreal and the way he left the others in the ruck. Bucky Dent with a two-strike count. Watches it. On the ground, Teron Say. Got a hurry. Missed him. Tough play for both players, Ron Say and Steve Garvey. Garvey's very good first baseman with the glove. He usually comes up with that play. Ronnie didn't give him a good throw to handle. Plays a right, but just doesn't quite get a good enough throw off to first base. Bounces right underneath his glove. He'd have had him if he'd have caught the ball at first base. Got to be an error on the throw. No. Call it a hit. They gave him a base hit? Yep. Well, you can tell the pitchers, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> Guy misses it. Give Gullet him squares hand. and butts. Foul. It's always interesting when Say and Garvey link up on a play, though, because of the personal relationship between the two men. Originally, Steve was a third baseman, too, as you know. And there's been a long existing rivalry between the two men. And at one point in time, some Dodgers were saying Garvey had grown too conscious of his own image and wasn't paying enough attention to baseball. Say was outspoken about that. They go to first to hold Bucky Dent. Ron Say edging in at third, anticipating Buck from Don Gullett, the Yankee pitcher. What do you want me to tell you, Howard? Yeah. They both hit I 30 was, home runs, and I they was, both knocked in over 100 runs. Good Buck. I was thinking of you and your image. <laughs> So Gullett sacrifices Dent to second base. That's two out. Tom Lasorda at the mound to talk to Don Sutton. Keith, we're getting down to the point here. We're down in the last three innings, bottom of the seventh inning. This is where Lasorda and Martin are going to make their money. 
Are they going to take the pitchers out? They're going to bring a relief pitcher in. They're going to bunt. They're going to hit and run. What are they going to do? Martin right there left his his left hander in Gullet to bunt because he knows he's still got a good fastball. The sort of goes to the mound there. How are you going to pitch him? Do you want to pitch for Rivers? Are you going to wait and pitch for Randolph? Well, in the light of the long-term feud between Martin and his owner, George Steinbrenner, I don't know how much money means to Martin at this point. All right, let's look at Lick, Mickey Rivers now, the top of the order. Rod Say still playing him deep at third base. Bucky Dent off second base. Score is tied at 2-2, and the pitch is lowered away for ball one. Martin puts Steinbrenner on notice that if he wins the pennant, and wins the World Series. He wants his contract extended from three years more up to five and wants more money. Last time up, Mickey Rivers hit a line shot right to Reggie Smith. Beats it on the ground foul. Down the third baseline and up into the crowd. The potential go-ahead run for the Yankees in Bucky Dent is sitting out at second base. Sacrificed there by Don Gullett. After getting a base hit, legging it out on a close play at first. Willie Randolph, who homered his last trip, is on deck. And the batter, though, is Mickey Rivers, who is a tough little customer. And that last foul chop down the third baseline was what we were looking for. The Friar turn it back. Swings and misses, and it's one and two. I'm very surprised that Ron says playing in that deep at third. Well, you got a runner in scoring position at second base. You can't let uh, you can't let a dribbler get through and, and give them a go-ahead run. He wants an infield single. I think they'll give it to him. Pops it to the left side, and it is going to be foul. Dusty Baker ran and ran and ran, losing his cap. Can't see from where we sit down into that corner. There's the bullpen for the Dodgers with Elias Sosa and Lance uh, Rotson warming up. Rotson the left-hander and Sosa the right-hander. So it's one and two. With Randolph waiting. Two out. Two two ball game. Sutton asks for Jaeger to go through the signs again, and we do it. Almost threw it away. I like that too. <laughs> Why? That warms my heart. <laughs> <laughs> we just let him know that he was out there, didn't Billy Martin? Two two. Sutton off. Chases Dent back. Bucky Dent getting a big edge out there at second base. You see, he's going back two steps. Now he's off again, and Rivers hits it high in the air to the left side for Ron Say. And in foul ground, Ron Say makes the catch, and so the Yankee bid for the lead is turned away. After seven innings of play, it's two two between the Dodgers and Yankees. Back with more baseball after this word from our local station. The story on the pitchers in tonight's ball game, but there is one other set of numbers that have a considerable amount of meaning, Tom Seaver. Don Gullett at 112 pitches here going into the eighth inning. Don Sutton, 94. You'll find out if these boys have done the running in the last couple of days. They're and now it is, it is time to watch the heavies in the Dodger order against Don Gullett. In the top of the eighth inning, Reggie Smith, Ron Say, and Steve Garvey. And he's high. Ball one. Gotta love the way Sutton worked Rivers over. That high hard went over Rivers' head. Then the change of speed pitch that had Rivers off stride and forced him to pop up. Ball is hit to right. Reggie Jackson makes the catch. So Reggie Smith flies to Reggie Jackson. One out. The batter will be Ron Zay. George Washington Bridge. Ron Zay. Another one of the sites in New York City. Many of you have seen it as you've flown in. That's the bridge Tom Seaver never thought he'd cross. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> and here we go to Ron Zay. Foul. Look out, Howard. I got you covered, Howard. Don't worry. Don't worry. I got you covered. I was looking over at Giant Stadium where I thought they were going to play football. Ron Say, the story during the season. He tore him up in April. Whew, did he ever. 
September choir at the Grand Slam in the playoffs against the Phillies. We've had two or three tennis balls look like thrown out onto the surface or something, and then suddenly Ron Say spotted something out there in front of uh, Willie Randolph and stepped out. The umpire, Larry McCoy, came over and picked it up. A lot of room in right center field for Ron Say as they set their defenses for him and he fouls it back to the screen for strike two. Consistency over a span of years is the ultimate yardstick of excellence in any athlete. Ron Say for the last three seasons has averaged 26 home runs and 97 RBIs per season. That is consistency. Two strike pitch. Just low. Just low and gullet. Didn't leap. The Yankee bullpen is again quiet as Tidrow warmed up briefly and then sat down. The Dodger fan is also quiet. One and two to say. Struck him up. In the morning paper today, Keith Gullett said he'd be able to pitch, but he didn't think he'd be 100%. I don't know if that was a psych job or what, because he, is, he has done a fine job giving up only four hits to the Dodgers here tonight, two runs in the first inning, and then throwing a whole bunch of zeros at him. He's now struck out six men in the ball game, and his pitching total is getting up around the 120 mark. Steve Garvey, but single. Score is tied 2-2 between the Dodgers and Yankees. Dodgers at bat, top of the eighth inning, and Gullet is in. Good oh, pitch. Strike one. Took a little off of him. Good pitch. Breaking ball got it into the strike zone. Steve, of course, and obviously looking for a fastball. Gullet Two is outs. Now at 116 pitches. He's been able the last three innings in a row to get the breaking ball over. Coming with it on the first delivery to a batter. Fastball hit on the ground to Bucky Dead. And so Don Gullett gets the Dodgers in order in the top of the eighth inning. We'll go to the bottom of the eighth for the Yankees with a score tied at 2-2. As we go to the bottom of the eighth inning now, that's a live picture from a helicopter and Willie Randolph, who went downtown his last at-bat for his fifth home run of this 1977 season, is at the plate to lead off. Don Sutton delivers. And he's in with a strike. He'll be followed by Thurman Munson, Reggie Jackson. The fourth man would be Chris Chambliss. So Don Sutton faces a comparable problem of Don Gullett. The heavies in the batting order here in the eighth inning. Randolph fouls that away. He fouled away a pitch to get down a little bit more. It would have been three to two. That was a curveball that got up in his eyes and hung too much. Didn't get down enough. There's Lasorda on the bench. Of course, sure watching his pitcher. Noted that, too. Yes, he has. One of the problems Don has had when he has had trouble this year has been that curve that tends to sail on him. It gets hangs up there, and people jump all over it. That pitch is high with waiting in the on-deck circle, Thurman Munson, while Elias Sosa and Lance Robson warm up in the Dodger bullpen again. Steve Yeager asks for help from Ed Sudol at first base, and Ed shakes his head and says no. And it's two balls and two strikes on Randolph. Bottom of the eighth inning in a 2-2 ball game, the opening game of the 1977 World Series. That pitch is outside. It is a full count for Randolph. This stadium is absolutely electric. These people love it. Bottom of the eighth inning, they know they get a run. They go to the top of the ninth inning, get three outs. They've got num number one, game number one of the World Series. Don't want that leadoff man on. Not this late in the game. And Randolph takes that one in on the hands and fouls it away. On the other side of the coin, Tom, if you saw last Friday's game against Philadelphia, and you watched Davileo with the bunt and Moto with the pinch hit, this Dodger team, you don't ever count out. 3 2 pitch to Randolph. Low ball four. So the leadoff man is on in the bottom of the eighth inning. 
That is the first base on balls, I believe, tonight by Don Sutton. The first. Thurman Munson. Could it be that he will change that particular step? I doubt it. He might put the bunt down. You want to play manager here? What are you going to do? <laughs> the best hit and run men in the American League. That's right. You got a hole over there. There goes Randolph. The ball is swung on. Hit down in the corner. Oh, There's your answer. That. Here comes Randolph around third. The throw to the plate. Offline and cut off by Ron Say, and the Yankees have the lead. 3 2. Holy cow, look at them. They're going crazy. Streamers all over the ballpark. They love it. They, the Yankees own New York City. Scrap Iron Munson. Beat him up. He gets hit in the throat, hit in the arms, hit in the legs. He won't go out of the lineup. The MVP in the American League a year ago, fighting all year long with his owner and with Reggie Jackson. But once on that playing field, throw out everything as Lasorda comes to the mound and calls for a new pitcher. By the way, we're going to take a look at Willie Randolph. Watch closely. You'll note that he almost tripped coming around third as a sudden loss of balance. Watch. Right there. But he didn't. He came on in to spike the plate, and the Yankees have a 3-2 lead on their eighth hit of Don Sutton in the bottom of the eighth inning. And we've got a new pitcher coming in for the Dodgers. Into the ball game for the Los Angeles Dodgers now as Don Sutton leaves the game and goes into the dugout. May stay and watch the rest of it. He pitched a fine ball game. He went out as a professional. That's what he is. Lance Robson has come on now in relief, a left-hander. His record four wins, one loss, saved two games, with an earned run average of 4.29. He pitched the third of an inning in the playoffs against Philadelphia, and he was effective. He did his job. He is from Potsco, Pennsylvania. He came July 21 this year from Albuquerque. He was drafted by the Dodgers, a free agent. This was his first trip to the Major League. He started at Ogden, Utah, the Dodger farm system in 1970, and then went on, worked his way up Albuquerque, and now to the big ball club, and now here is a youngster, Tom Seaver, with a heat on him facing Reggie Jackson. Well, he started the year in AAA, and now he's halfway through the year went to Dodger Stadium, joined the big club. Here he is in October, pitching in the World Series, and none other than Reggie Jackson. One of 60,000 people in New York City. Jackson squared with the base one of Thurman Munson sitting out at second base. I find that very interesting. Reggie Nobody Turner on the bunt, runner on second base. Billy wants that runner at third base with one out. Reggie, the left-hand hitter, doesn't think, maybe doesn't think he can pull the ball. Now he lets it go. Two balls and no strikes. Reggie looks, actually turned and looked into the dugout. Ron Say is even with the bag at third. If Reggie can do nothing else in this situation, he wants to get on the, the ball on the ground to the right side of second base. Austin comes outside, and it's three balls and no strikes to Reggie. Austin, 25 years of age. Sosa still active in the pen. Low ball four. So now Tom Lasorda's pitching staff has a case of the wobble as Ron Say goes to the mound. Lasorda, peering anxious now as the Yankees have taken a 3 2 lead in the bottom of the eighth inning. And Chambliss in consultation with Dick Hauser, the third base coach, the primary task to move those runners over. Got to look for a bunt, Howard. Right to the bunting situation. And bunt the ball down toward the third baseline. Make safe field the ball. Give up the out of first base. 
Probably walk nettles. Chris Campbell. Nobody out. One run in. Two runners aboard. Chris squares the punt. Pulls it away. Takes the strike. Hunts him. Up and around at second base. Drew a throw from Steve Yeager. Munson at second. And Jackson at first. Chambliss, one strike count. Nobody out. Gets it down. Pitcher Rock goes to third. They got the force on the lead runner, Thurman Munson, for the first out of the inning. But it is too hard. Yep. But it is too hard and not enough on the baseline. This bun has got to be down the line. You try to make the third baseman come in and feel the ball. Pitcher's got to get over toward the line. It makes for an easy force down at third base. Say he kind of bobbled this ball. I don't know what he was doing. He's going to tag the runner. Might be a case of the jitters out there on the field right now. He did show hesitation, yes, he did. didn't he? A little confusion. Now with one out. Reggie Jackson at second. Chris Shambliss at first. Greg Nettles. Lance Robson's pitches outside. Ball one. And the talk I had with Tommy John yesterday, Tom, he was emphasizing how when he first pitched against Nettles back when he was in the American League and Nettles was with Cleveland, Nettles impressed him with his ability to hit left-handers. Ball two, low. Lou Pinella, who hits right-handed, is on deck. That was markedly true of Nettles when he first joined the Yankees. It has not been recently true of Nettles, however. Bottom of the eighth, Yankees have taken the lead, 3-2. That pitch is low. And it's three balls and no strikes, and the young left-hander is in trouble. Just behind to Reggie Jackson and lost him. He did get Chambliss. Chambliss aboard at first on the fielder's choice. The play went to third to get Munson for the first out of the inning. There's Chris coming off first and Reggie Jackson up at second. And three ball, no strike pitch to Greg Nettles. Ball four, the bases are loaded with one out. And Tom Masora is on his way to the mound. With Lou Pinella coming to the plate, could be that Elias Sosa gets the call right here. But then it could be that they'll lead it. Let's see. I think they're going to bring Sosa in. I don't think there's any way they can not bring there right here. He's already ball. done it. So the third Dodger pitcher is on his way in from the bullpen as the Yankees trying to break it open here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Time is called. We'll be right back. Yankee Stadium. On this cool October evening, New York City and the line scored the ball game. You can see the Yankees now with eight hits, all eight of them coming off Don Sutton, three runs, committing no errors. The Dodgers with two runs on four hits, and Elias Sosa is now in the ball game. Sosa, during the course of the season, was an effective pitcher for the Dodgers. His record only two and two, but he worked 63 and two thirds innings with an earned run average of 1.97. And young Lance Robson leaves the ball game. He pitched to three batters. He walked two of them. He did get Chris Chambliss on the bunt. Chris goes into the book as a fielder's choice as a result of the play at third on Thurman Munson in the playoffs against the Phillies in game one Sosa was the losing pitcher he worked two innings he had a walk called in that ball game that figured in the total story of it he worked in game number three worked two thirds of an inning so Elias Sosa is on in relief of Lance Robson who was called on in relief of Don Sutton The Yankees have the bases loaded. They have the lead at 3-2. And the base runner will set them for you. Reggie Jackson over at third base. There he is. Talking to Dick Hauser. At second base, it is Chris Shen. And at first base, it is Greg Nutter, where Bobby Cox is talking to him. Okay, we await 
the resumption of action. But again, a quick reminder, because of its overwhelming importance, 11.30 to 12 tomorrow morning, the ABC News special on the space shuttle test flight. Remember, Soviet Union failed in its effort today. What a boost this will be for the United States space program if the test is successful. 11.30 to 12 tomorrow morning. Now, a crisis in the ball game. The Yankees are run ahead. Base is filled. Lou Pinella comes to the plate to face Elias Sosa. Bases are loaded. One out. One run in. And it's right here that you wonder what in the world would make anybody want to become a relief pitcher. The one thing that uh, the Dodgers, have, maybe they have had a hole the last half of the season, has been their bullpen. Rick Rhodes' knuckle has stopped knuckling, and they've had some trouble out of the bullpen. Vanilla swings and misses for strike one. And Steve Yeager goes to talk. So this is a good power pitcher. Got a good fastball. Hard slider. Doesn't change speeds very much. He's going to come right at you with his hard stuff. This is loaded. He can't do anything else. Looking for a for a double play here. Going to throw a sinker. He wants a double play. Get out of the inning. Foul. Late, and it's two strikes. The last time we had a grand slam in the World Series was Dave McNally of the Baltimore Orioles, October 13, 1970. That's a dreadful thing to bring up. It's Tom Lasorda and Red Adams, the Dodger pitching coach. It's a dreadful thing for the Dodger partisans to hear. The Yankee crowd, they might. Some of the stones might rattle out of this old structure if he were to jerk one here. Two strikes. Called it foul. Just outside of first base. Lou Pinella, like Munson, has got the ability to go to right field. He, those two players can go to right field as well as any two right-handed hitters. I think that I've ever seen. They're outstanding at hitting the ball the other way. Martin and Munson sure crossed everybody up in this inning, though. I think on Munson's ball, he just got a pitch inside that he could pull. All right, Sosa again, ready to go at two strikes on Lou Pinella. You can get a fastball ball. in. That's sure. it. Blew it by Elias Sosa went to the top shelf and brought a fastball and Vanilla had a full swing and couldn't get it. There's nothing cute about that, Keith. I mean, it's right here. Here, hit it. You know, we're going to struck out or we're going to get a double play. And I'm not going to a corner. I want you, you know, you're going to hit the best thing I've got to throw at you. And that's got to be the thing on his mind with the bases loaded. Now you've got two out with the bases still loaded for Bucky Dent. Sosa trying to get the Dodgers off the hook. Go to the top of the ninth, down by no more than one. The Yankees lead here in the bottom of the eighth, 3 2. And Sosa, the third Dodger pitcher. Blow it away to Bucky Dent. Jackson on third, Champions on second, Nettles on first. Dent has hit a grand slam, did it in May 3rd against the Angels. First one of his career this year. Bucky, the crowd is saved. Sosa going his neck. And he's outside. Ball two. Don Gullett is in the on-deck circle. Just in case Dent does something, the two out of the base is full. Strike. And on the fence, they're saying, throwing it again. He is bringing it up there. This is not a time for finesse. This is not a time to be cute. He's throwing the ball that hard. You throw it right up to home plate and say, hit it. 
Willie Martin coaching his baseman. Let's keep your eye on the ball and the sort of hoping to get out of this inning with just one run. 94 miles an hour, that last fastball. It is hit on the ground to Billy Russell over to Davy Lopes. And they escape with a minimum amount of damage considering the circumstances. After eight innings of play, the Yankees have the lead over the Dodgers, three to two. For the purposes of defense, Paul Blair in right field for the New York Yankees going to the top of the ninth inning, the Yankees leading 3-2. Billy Martin as the attendance for tonight's game. This is the largest crowd in Yankee Stadium this year. Billy Martin using all his personnel to the uttermost, the Dodgers, a dogged, persistent ball club, staying alive in the ball game, quelling the Yankee threat, the action. As Don Gullett pitches to Dusty Baker, then Glenn Burke, scheduled and then you have Steve Yeager then the pitcher spot Manny Mota has already come out of the dugout carrying a handful of bats for the Dodgers as Baker swings and fouls it away and the count is one and one on Dusty Manny Mota on the record one of the finest pinch hitters in baseball history Tom Lasorda has a bench that allows a lot of moving around in case the Dodgers could get a run here as Manny Moto loosens up. Then he could have Rick Mundy go to center field and Dusty Baker fouls that away upstairs. Tom Seaver up here in the booth with Keith Jackson and yours truly. And of course he'll be with us throughout the series. Dick Good. Tedrow working in the bullpen. Along with Sparky Lyle who's uh, standing over there throwing loosely easily. One and two pitch inside of the hand. Oh. Got a moan from the pitcher. Oh, you get a big moan from me. 93 miles an hour. Good movement. Pitch before that Baker did not get around on. Dullard is still bringing it up to home plate. He wants this leadoff hitter right here. Get that first out of the inning. Don't let this guy get on base. 2-2 two -two and Baker hits it high in the air to the right side and it's going to drift and drift into the crowd. Fastball still did not get around on him. He's now two balls off to the right side. Don Gullard is very aware of that. You have to come out of your shoes to get around on a 94 mile an hour fastball. Gullard's getting out of his shoes, getting it up there, that's for sure. But Dusty stays alive. Nettle guarding the line. At third for the Yankees. Trying to keep him out of the corners. And the pitch to Baker is inside. And it's a full count. Three and two. Yogi Berra. Billy Martin nervously walking around. Clapping his hands. Nettle hugging that line. Not wanting to give up the extra base hit. Shot down. A base hit. Lou Pinella over in a hurry. Dusty Baker, a big turn and hangs on. And Pinella holds him to a single. That's a good battle by Dusty Baker there. Ran the count to three and two. Even the ball that looked like it was out of the strike zone. Couldn't get it into the corner enough for a double. He has been a remarkable player all year long for the Dodgers. Peaking in the championship playoff series, as we have mentioned. He fought Gullet head to head. Stayed alive. Fouls consecutively on two fine fastballs and wound up with the head on a full count. Now, Manny Moda, the premier pinch hitter in baseball. Game three of the playoffs delivered a pinch hit double. It was such a major factor in the ultimate decision of what happened in the National League in the fight for the pennant for the Phillies. He did it with two strikes on him. The Dodgers were but one strike away from losing the game, but they won it. A combative team. They keep coming at you. Oda squares the butt. Turns instead and takes got the swing. Hung up. And they got Dusty Baker hung up between first and second base. He dives. Oh! Gambling and they call him safe. Baker gambling went airborne and Chambliss missed him. And Chambliss knew it. He did not argue. He did not fight. The Yankees blew a big, big play.
Watch it here now. Chris, now watch Baker leave his feet. And Shambliss missed him, and Baker did not leave the base path. Tumbles in, grabs a hold of the bag, and he's in. Woo! That's a big out. You have to wonder why Chambliss didn't die there. You thought for a moment it was a, almost a frivolous waste of a potential run at first base as Motor squared to bunt and then took a chop at it, and suddenly Dusty was hung out on the end of a limb. Now Motor squares again, and the pitch is high and away, and it's one and one. Baker had made a mistake, a terrible mistake. He had overcommitted. He well, was they're playing hit front there. Howard. I mean, they're well, playing virtual boy to get the ball on the ground, and you have to have confidence in the hitter that he's a hitter like Moda you can to get that ball on the ground. That's all part of being aggressive baseball. You can't give the Dodgers that kind of second opportunity. Not normal. I find it so I'm surprised that he's bunning. He sort of wants to tie this game up. Ball is fouled off, and Baker was running. There's the hit and run. That's what that they're trying to do on the run. first pitch. The first one was called a butcher boy. They're playing with a fake bunt and then chop the ball into the infield. You get those infielders moving around in here. If he had got the ball on the ground, you never know what's going to happen. The sort of will try it. He'll try anything. He'll do anything to beat you. Looks like Dusty broke a shoelace. That's Steve Yaker waiting in, waiting in the on deck circle. Manny Mota has the ability to hit the ball out as time is called while Thurman Munson goes to the mound to talk to Don Gullett. His last pinch hit of the regular season this year was a home run. Then in the playoffs, he just missed a home run. When Greg Luzinski climbed up the wall, got a glove on the ball and couldn't hang on. Fell for a double. But watch Baker on the right side of the picture. Moda, the hitter on the left. One and two pitch. Ball is hit to the right side. Paul Blair. Put into the lineup by right. Billy Martin in replace of Reggie Jackson for the sake of defense. Blair makes the catch. You've got one out. Now it is Steve Yeager with Lee Lacey moving into the on deck circle to hit at the pitcher spot. Yeager in tonight's ball game grounded too short, rolled out to the second baseman, and fouled out to the first baseman. Yeager on the season, a 256 hitter with 16 home runs. One out, Baker on first. Yankees lead 3 2, top of the ninth, and the pitch is high. Lacey waiting in the on deck circle. One for one in the championship series of the National League. Up and shift. Yeager checks on it, and it's ball two outside. Talking to Steve yesterday, he's, he likes to hit at Gullet. He said the last three or four years that he faced him, when Gullet was still with the Cincinnati Reds, he hit him good. He's 0 for 3 here tonight. He's due, and he's got a count in his favor two balls and no strikes. He is a good double play man. He hits the ball on the ground. Game number one would be to the Yankees. Gullet now at 132 pitches. That's 133, and he's high and outside for a free ball and no strike count. And Billy Martin, Brent quickly, is out of the dugout and on his way to the mound. We might see another pitcher right about here. As a matter of fact, I almost thought that Gullet might have indicated a little disgust and perhaps even made the kind of motion that summoned Billy from the dugout. So Possibly. Fine. Very honest fellow, he'll tell you. Well, for the Dodgers, there have been two key plays. There was the sixth inning play at home plate. When Garvey stormed into the plate, the home plate umpire out of position called him out. He may have been. The umpire was still out of position. And now in the rundown on Dusty Baker, the opposite, there was escape as Chambliss failed to touch the base run. Well, Billy Martin made the decision to leave him, as you can see Don Gullett nodding his head, saying, I've still got some. And so now we'll see. 
Three balls and no strikes to Steve Yeager for the tying run at first base. And Dusty Baker, he lost him high and away. And now the tying run walks to second base as Steve Yeager takes up residence at first base. So there is Dusty Baker representing the tying run at second base. And here is Lee Lacy. Who has Lacey. also gotten some big hits, as you know, this year. Sir. Tough. Lacey, as I told you, had a pinch hit appearance in the playoff series against the Phillies and went one for one. And Steve Yeager now has been called from the field. And we have a pitch runner, Raphael Landestroy, an infielder who came up to the Dodgers when Teddy Martinez went down with an injured leg. And Billy Martin now has decided to make a pitching change. Lee Lacey, scheduled to come to the plate as the pinch hitter. I'll tell you one thing, Tom Seaver, as Bella comes out to a deserved old base. That man picks a fine ball game here tonight. Didn't know if he'd be able to pitch. Said he wasn't sure if he was 100%. Went out there and gave everything in his head. Ran it up to home plate about 95 and 96 miles an hour all night. Threw about 140 pitches. On a tender shoulder, he did a fine job for Billy Martin and all the Yankees. And of a cut with the whole memorable history that we talked about, that Keith mentioned as he opened our telecast tonight. All of the years, the great plays. Lavagetto breaking up the Bevins no-hitter. John Frito's catch, which we've mentioned. Mickey Owen missing Hugh Casey's third strike on Tommy Hendrick. Memphis, colossal grand slammer in Brooklyn in 53. Amorosa's catch on Barrett. What a history between these two teams. Lawson's perfect game. And here comes the man who Martin would trust his own life with. And why not? Look at the record this year. 13 and 5. 26 saves. 2.17 ERA. So while we watch Sparky Lyle crank up, let me tell you about what they're going to be doing in Fayetteville, Arkansas, Saturday. Oh, they'll be roaring and stomping 12.30 Eastern time, and we invite you to join us. For Texas and Arkansas, the Longhorns are rising up to knock down the Oklahoma Sooners down in the Cotton Bowl. Undefeated Texas against undefeated Arkansas. So enjoy NCAA football over most of these ABC stations this Saturday at 12.30 Eastern. One of the things I'm just terribly curious about is they ever found the hog. The Razorback got loose, took off for the Ozarks, and they've been looking for it ever since. Right here, Sparky Lyle is looking for one more save in his brilliant baseball career. The book on Don Gullett, eight innings. Eight and a third, actually, with five hits. Struck out six, and he walked six. The Dodgers dug out, anxious with a tying run and the person of Dusty Baker up at second base. Rafael landis Joy running for Steve Yeager at first base. The Dodgers have plenty of catching. They have Jerry Grody, and they also have Johnny Oates. So they have three outstanding catchers on their roster. They really do. Jerry Grody, Tom Seaver's catcher through all his years with the Mets. And Tom, you've already stated your opinion of Jerry, the best catcher you ever pitched to, right? Well, I have this very many, but he was an outstanding defensive catcher. There's my buddy Jerry Grody, the Texan. Has a ranch down there in San Antonio. All right, here's Sparky Lyle now, who won two of the five games for the Yankees against Kansas City, and he's facing Lee Lacy, a right-handed batter, and Lyle is on target with his first pitch for strike one. It's a 3-2 ball game. Yankees lead, Dodgers at bat, top of the ninth, one out. You have two men aboard, the tying run at second base. Dusty Baker has good speed. Rafael Landestoy at first base can fly. Hard shot into left field. Here comes Baker around third base. Vanilla up for the ball. Landestoy over on second, but the game is even as Baker comes bumping home from second. And Lacey does his job. And this is what I meant about this Dodger team. You can't give them anything. They come through in the clutch if you open the door for them. And Lee Lacey did it there, the way Manny Motor and Vic D'Avalio did it last Friday. 
Now you have the go-ahead potential at second base and Len Destoy with Lacey at first base. And the batter now is Davy Lopes, the top of the order. A 3-3 ball game in the top of the ninth inning. And Sparky Lyle pitches to Lopes inside. They are tough. I'm telling you, they're a scrappy group of players right there. They're playing tough tonight. Mike Garman and Doug Rao now in the Dodger bullpen. And time is called. No pitch. Davey Lopes has been known to play little games with you. He'll exercise every opportunity you give him. Pitcher takes too much time. He'll call a timeout. Back out of there. Ball is hit in the air to right center field for Mickey Rivers. And Landestoy, halfway down, retreats back to second base. And here's the next guy, Keith, who can get you in the clutch. Who comes back from fielding adversity time and again with a key hit. Remember, this is the fellow who last Friday hit one right back up the middle to win the game. You there you see. go, just what I was talking about. They gave him a little bit of room in right center. Russell hits it up the middle to Mickey Rivers. He hit it off the nose, but right at Rivers. And Sparky Lyle comes in and stops the Dodger threat. But going to the home half of the ninth inning, it's even 3-3. Back with more after this word from our local station. Mike Garman is now on in relief for the Los Angeles Dodgers. He will be the fourth Dodger pitcher in the ball game. Sutton started and Don's now off the hook. What a ball game this has been. First, the Garvey out at home right, playing the sixth. Engine, then the Ladies Yanks could have blown the whole thing open in the bottom of the eighth. Bases loaded, one out, Vanella up. He fanned and dead grounded eight. out. And then in the top of the ninth, Baker trapped on the base pass. And Dusty Baker is not the late Jackie Roosevelt Robinson. Sparky Lyles coming to the plate. The point being, you'd expect Baker to be caught in a rundown. He wasn't. He escaped Chambliss's tag. That inch the door open for the Dodgers, and they came through in tight. Sparky Lyle hitting. That shows you how much respect Billy Martin has for his ability to get people out. Leading off the inning and hitting with Mike Garman pitching to Jerry Grody and Rick Mundy now playing in center field for the Dodgers and quickly Garman has a two strike count. Mike Garman you can see from that beat the Yankees that started with Boston back in 69. He came over to the Dodgers but is fouled away. He came with Rick Mundy from the Chicago Cubs and the trade that sent Bill Buckner to Chicago and there were a lot of people who thought the big right hander from Idaho might be a sort of a bonus in the deal. Rick Mundy now in center field as you can see. Rick has had his troubles this year and Mike Garman has done very well. You know, the interesting thing there Keith, is that if we did have the DH tonight you wouldn't have to worry about that first out missing. That's right. So Sparky Lyle fouling it is gone and Mickey Rivers is up there now. People talk about, well, he should have hit for Lyle in the bottom of the ninth inning, leading off. You know, they'll get on Billy Martin. That's one of the things that makes baseball interesting. Two strikes very quickly on Mickey Rivers. Mickey swung from the heels on that, the pitch 90 miles an hour. From a Dodger point of view, you got to be careful with this fella. He's got surprising power. 11 home runs. Struck him out. Mr. Garman looks impressive, doesn't he? Really did on that. He's getting it up there. He's a big man. He's a darn big man. And he can get that fastball to home plate. Willie Randolph, the batter for New York, in the bottom of the ninth inning, with a score even at 3-3. Big Mike doing a little psych job on he himself. He is excited, isn't he? Look <laughs> at him. He says, I'm here at Yank Stadium, folks. I love it. World Series time. That's right. Yes, sir. And he's throwing strikes, too. Really, a pitcher's got to come out of that bullpen and throw strikes. Low with that one. Lives in Wilder, Idaho. 
Brody looked at his glove, couldn't believe he missed it. A 3-3 ball game, I'll guarantee you, nobody has left. This has been a white knuckler almost from the very beginning. Feet on the ground for Billy Russell at shortstop. And so Mike Carmen comes in and does a tap match on the Yankees in the bottom of the ninth inning, getting them in order very quickly. So after nine complete innings of play, it's all even at three. Well, gentlemen, we're about to have the 38th extra inning game in World Series play. The last one we had was October 21, 1975, between Boston and Cincinnati. Boston beat them 7 to 6. Well, I don't want to trouble you, Keith, but in case you've got travel plans between now and tomorrow night, the longest World Series game in history took place on October 9, 1916, when the Red Sox defeated the Dodgers 2-1. to October 9, 1916. Tom Saber and I were there. <laughs> Just when you graduated from law school. <laughs> Reggie Smith, Ron Say, Steve Garvey, Reggie's wife sitting right there, anxious, obviously. Sparky Lyle low with his first pitch to Reggie Smith. Sparky's got a good slider. That's his money pitch. And he keeps it down in the strike zone. He is tough. Ball is hit high and deep to left center field, but it's a long way out there. And Mickey Rivers backs up about 400 feet and makes the catch. They wave to that one at Fenway. They might wave to that one at Dodger Stadium, too. But we are not at Dodger Stadium. Nor at Fenway. And Ron Say is at bat for the Dodgers. Garvey now moving to the on-deck circle. Don't forget, this fellow hit 30. He can lose it. Both bullpens quiet. Swing and a miss. Don't forget, too, looking ahead, Thurman Munson leads off for the Yankees, but Reggie Jackson will not be batting second. Paul Blair will be. Get on the ground to Bucky Dent. Ball takes a little bit of a skid on him, but he has it well. Two down. Base is clean. Steve Garvey, the Dodger first baseman, who has a bunt single in three trips. This might be the time as we come to the end of the 77 season where Garvey will hitch up the belt a little and reach back for the little extra that Tom Lasorda had asked for, and Garvey hit 33 home runs of this year. That pitch, strike. Don't forget, we expect more of save tomorrow night as you look at lovely Mrs. Steve Garvey. Catfish Hunter taking the mound after a long period of idleness for the Yankees. Strike two. Greg Nettle, almost on the line at third. Two-strike pitch to Garvey, outside and high. One of the few fastballs you see him throw and threw it out of the strike zone, too. Did not want to give that pitch in the strike zone to see the hit. And I guess slider here. Another fastball. They caught him out. They have at first base. And shoot off says yes to win around. And so Lyle gets the Dodgers in order in the top of the 10th inning. Have another look at it. Just a matter of whether or not he went through the strike zone and exercised the wrists. And you have a look. Looked like it. He is way around. It feels that the first baseman shoot all and Garvey's gone. So we're still even after nine and a half. Back with more baseball after this word from our local station. Here at the bottom of the 10th inning, it'll be Thurman Munson, Paul Blair, and Chris Shamblis. Munson has singled and doubled. He has scored a run, and he had knocked in a go-ahead run for the Yankees in the bottom of the 8th inning. And the first pitch for Mike Thurman is inside. The Yankees signed him off the Kent State campus. 
Keith Gorman reminds me of Mark Littell of the Royals. And build and the way he throws. Inside with the hand, ball two. Mark has certainly had his troubles with this crowd, hasn't he? Yep. That pitch is low. But once again, the Yankees are very close to getting the leadoff man aboard here in the bottom of the 10th inning. He came in there last inning. Garment threw strikes, comes in now. He's 3 0. Don't want to get that leadoff hitter on. You see Paul Blair bunning the winning run at second base. Yes, sir. Well, Thurman Munson walks. Things that make managers gray. Leadoff hitters that get on and walk in the pitcher. Paul Blair has been a very serviceable player for the Yankees. He started in the Mets organization, Tom, you might remember. I certainly did. They let him go. He was a startlingly good outfielder for Baltimore for a lot of years. Got beamed at the plate. Puts the foot in the bucket. Openly fearful, according to many. But he's gotten some very big hits, including a hit in the winning ninth inning against Kansas City. He pulls the bat away on the butt attempt, takes it low for ball one. He's a good bunner. He told me that he was never so nervous in his whole baseball career as he was when he came to the plate in the ninth inning Sunday against Kansas City. This is his fifth World Series. The butt is down. They're going to go to second. Eddie. Oh. Gary Brody. <laughs> that time, and he fired it. What a throw by Grody. There's my man, Jerry Grody. Watch him come out of there. There's nobody that comes out from behind home plate faster than Jerry Grody. I've seen this plate a hundred times, bare hand, and watch the throw to second. He's like a lion coming out from behind home plate. And throws a strike. A strike to second base, no question. And that man worked for me for 10 years. You don't think I wasn't in heaven? Now it is Chris Chambliss of the plate. A lot of us thought he made you. A lot of you may be right. <laughs> <laughs> one out, one on. Blair on at first base. And Garman goes over there. But what we have seen last inning and thus far this inning is the Dodgers making the plays they have to make. Winning run is on first base and Paul Blair. The pitch to Chris Chambliss is inside. Ball one. Chris taking a good long look at Dick Hauser, third base coaching box. Now steps in. They go back to first. Blair goes in on his knees. Campanis made another great acquisition when he got Brody right before the trading deadline. He was worried about Jaeger getting hurt. Garmin is low. Two balls and no strikes. Jerry wasn't catching every day over with the Mets. John Stearns was catching. Jerry plans to retire after the season. Knew he'd be available. He just picked up one of the best defensive catchers in the game of baseball in his prime. Probably the best. Charlie Huff, the knuckleballer, is now up in the bullpen for the Dodgers along with Doug Rao. Campless hits it to Garvey. They go to second, get one. Back to first, no. So. They've been able to kill off that lead runner twice now. You've got two out. We talked about that before, Keith. The Dodgers being able to do the fundamental. That's they can right. do everything. Got to move those runners along. You fail to do that, inevitably it costs you. Look at it again. Garvey has a little trouble getting the ball out of his glove, it looked like. But he did make a good throw. Inside the bag, right there where Russell will handle it. Chambliss, of course, beat the throw out at first. So now the speed is gone in the person of Blair. You have Shambliss. He's not slow footed by any means, but he does not possess the speed of a Blair. The batter is uh, Greg Nettles. Greg Nettles, as you can see, is hitless in the ball game tonight. 37 home runs on the year. Little check roller out toward the pitcher. Brody picks it up, guns it, and the inning is over. So the Yankees, despite getting the leadoff man on here in the bottom of the 10th inning, are able to move him around, and we're still at three, going to the 11th. 
Jerry Fruity getting rid of the catching gear and putting on a batting glove to come up and take his cuts in this inning. Dusty Baker will lead off. There's my buddy Jerry Grody. Jerry Grody's Jerry a tough cuss. He's never gotten along in a public relations sense with the press in New York. Let's everybody know exactly how he feels. Nothing false about him. Never a good hitter for percentage, but a dangerous hitter. One who's gotten a lot of big hits for the Mets through the years. Sparky Lyle on the mound. A pitch to Dusty Baker, who led off with a single in the ninth inning and came around to score the tying run. Brought home by Lee Lacey. Rick Mundy into the on-deck circle. He's now playing center field in place of Glenn Burke and then Jerry Grody. Dodgers scored twice at the top of the first inning. Yankees came back with one. Here's the pitch to Baker. And it's low inside for ball one. The Yankees then came along to finally get even and then go ahead. And that's where we are as the Dodgers came back with that run of the ninth inning all even at three and three with a one ball one strike count on Dusty Baker. This is the man who made that run possible. Baker hits it on the ground. Nettles coming in a long way to come. Bear oh, handled it. Oh, got it. Greg Nettles was playing him deep down the line at third had a long way to come to get him. Ladies and gentlemen you have seen some superb defensive play here. Nice lap of last inning and right here. The top of the 11th inning. Baker right on top of it. Another barehanded play by Nettles. Again, I say, who has made himself an outstanding third baseman. Just a set. super play. Just as that's a pitcher's dream, a super play. Nettles has had a tough night at the plate tonight. All season long, when in batting slumps, his defensive play never suffered. He is a professional. Rick Monday playing center field fouls it back. Rick Monday who's had a lot of back trouble this year. He spent a lot of hours hanging upside down in a contraption that eases the pain on the lower back. Same problem you've got. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fouled away and it's very quickly strike two on Rick Monday. Native of Santa Monica, California, came out of Arizona State. Charlie Finley got him. Then he wound up with the Cubs. One of my teammates with the Alaska Gold Panthers, along with Greg Nettles. Back right. in my college days. Back yeah. Rick and I played together up at Fairbanks. Fairbanks, Greg. Alaska. Pops it, foul, out of play. Count holds at two strikes. Jerry Grody on deck here in the top of the 11th inning. Opening game of the 1977 World Series, and it may be like this through the whole day. Monday goes around, strikes out. Wanted to check on it and couldn't. Bad cut and a bad high slider, it looks like to me. So Monday's gone. Two out. Here's Jerry Brody now doing the catching for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Face, that, excuse me, in that first game of the National League uh, playoffs, he walked and scored on Ron Say's grand slam, but here he popped it up to Chris Hendricks in fair ground, and Chris makes the catch for the third out. And so the Dodgers go in order in the top of the 11th inning. And the score remains 3-3 with Vanilla, Dent, and Lyle scheduled up for the Yankees in the bottom of the 11th inning. So Mike Garman, if he's pitching, will be working to the bottom third of the order. There is a look at the old ball yard with Mike Garman out on the mound now, cranking up. And Billy Martin got to make some decisions. Maybe, maybe not. He's got Vanilla scheduled to come to the plate. Right-handed batter against a right-handed pitcher. Then it would be Bucky Dent and then the pitcher Sparky Lyle. Tom Lasorda, on the other hand, is spending time talking to Red Adams, the Dodger pitching coach. Pinella, of course, will hit. If he were ever thinking of removing Pinella for a pinch hitter, the time would have been with the bases filled to put up Roy White to lessen the possibility of a double play. But pinella has been too good a percentage hitter all year to pinch hit for. And so Lou stayed up there, and he fanned. 
That was when the Yanks could have blown open the game in the eighth inning. As for making decisions, Martin's had that problem all year long. Nothing but decisions. The Yankees running a daily soap opera for an entire season. Ran it in the daytime, they ran it in prime time, and they're doing it again tonight. Now the big right-hander from Wilder, Idaho, will try to get him out as he faces the bottom third of the order. The Yankee pen is quiet, which means Lyle will hit. But it all depends on what happens here, I suspect, with Mr. Pinella, because they can crank him up in a hurry if they have to. Here's the first pitch to Lou, and he beats it on the ground. Billy Russell, long way to go, can't get it. And into center field for a base hit. Now do you take him out? Do you get Lou Pinella out of there? you get a pitch run for him? I would. I'd get Roy White in there. Russell playing way around in the hole. Couldn't get to the roller up the middle. They played for Pinella to pull. Simply bounced one right up the middle. They played him right. No pinch runner coming out for Pinella yet. And no action in the Yankee fan. Lyle is out in the on-deck circle with Bucky Dent standing at the plate. Dent squares, punch it. Brody out. Got to go to second. Get it. He made that play. Twice. Well, Jerry Brody's kept this cup in. Get the Dodgers in here. He's cut men down at second base twice. Well, if you I mean, incredible. If you're going to bunt with Brody behind the plate, you've got to bunt eight to ten feet out. Otherwise, you've got no shot. You've got to make somebody else feel the ball. Get the ball out in front. Make the first baseman feel the ball. A very bad bunt. He's out easy there at second base. Pinella yeah. obviously disgusted with it. How easily he makes that. He's like a cat pouncing on that ball. Dead on first base on the fielder's choice. And here's Sparky Lyle. He turns to bunt and fouls it away. They're going to do this till they get it right. Brody will <laughs> <Right. laughs> right. psych them out. Yeah. <laughs> Brody's up there saying, well, go ahead, try it again. Rao and Roden remain in the Dodger pen. Sparky's got it down, but he's got a foul. Brody out in a hurry to scoop it up just in case it hit something and kick back in. I can hear Phil Rizzuto saying now, I taught them how to bunt spring training. Why didn't they learn? Marky hasn't done it all year. <laughs> He's done the best job so far. He hadn't made it out yet. To punctuate uh, some of the history on Jerry Brody, he came over to the Mets August 31 for two minor leaguers and some money, Randy Rogers and Dan Smith and Cash. Missed it, he's gone. So Sparky Lyle tries to drag the last time he was at bat. Fouled off for a strikeout. Now he just flat misses one and he's gone again. Baseball is no different from any other sport. You squander opportunities, you fail to capitalize. Percentage-wise, it catches up with you in the outcome of the contest. Second straight inning, they got the leadoff man on. Couldn't advance. Now it's Mickey Rivers, top of the order. In the bottom of the 11th inning with a score tied at 3-3. And Rivers hits it high in the air down the left side for Dusty Baker. Inning is over. So the Yankees, as Howard said, get the leadoff man aboard but can't do anything with him. And so the score remains after 11 complete innings of play at Yankee Stadium. Dodgers three and the Yankees three. For the Los Angeles Dodgers, as we go to the top of the 12th inning, Vic Davalillo, who came out of the Mexican League in August of this year and became a considerable figure in Los Angeles, particularly in Game 3, as he laid down a bunt in the game against the Philadelphia Phillies, and he was involved in a comeback victory, but he beats this one right out to Willie Randolph for out number one. Vic never was too patient. Oh, but bat. he's an amazing fellow. When they went back to the minors back in 74, he was 38. Now it's 77, <laughs> and he's still 38. So he's an amazing fellow. I went back in an old minor league record book that I have laid around the house. I'll guarantee you he's 41. <laughs> I don't believe he'll tell you that. No. Davy Lopes now top of the order for the Dodgers. In the top of the 12th. 3-3 ball game. Sparky Lyon. 
Ball one. Just misses the outside corner with a slider, and it is ball two to Davy Lopes. Bill Russell on deck. He Why doesn't out. want this guy on base. This guy will haunt you. Ball is hit to short center. Might be trouble. Rivers in a hurry. Ball hung a little bit. Mickey Rivers, that great speed of his, able to bring it down. And now it is Bill Russell. Bill Russell. 43 strikeouts and 634 at bats. I didn't get him, I know that. <laughs> He tripled in the first inning. He looks ball one. You know, one thing, Keith, about the Yankees getting that leadoff runner on and then not being able to win the ball game, where they're short, possibly, is in the bullpen, and Sparky's got to come out and throw a couple extra innings. And this it may, may not tell in today's game, but we get down into game three and game four, what's happening right here tonight may be a factor in those third and fourth ball games. Two balls and no strikes to Russell, two and one. He's really been working that inside, just missing twice and connecting that time and pitching to Russell. Reggie Smith is waiting on deck with two out. Russell hits that one right at Willie Randolph. That should be and is out number three. So the Dodgers are gone in the top of the 12th inning. If it goes to 13, they'll have the heavyweights in the Dodger batting order. So, after 11 and a half, 3-3 three, three ball game. Back with more after this word from our local station. Here is the fifth Dodger pitcher of the night, Rick Roden. His record on the season, you can see. In playoff game number three, he pitched four and a third innings, two hit ball, allowed no runs against the Philadelphia Phillies when he came on in relief of Bert Hooten. So he pitched very well in that ball game. Uh, hard throwing right-handers in to see what he can do here. Sorry, Keith, he did more. He pitched magnificently in that Friday ball game. He's a remarkable competitor anyway. While he is warming up, let's recap the scoring for you. Davey Lopes walked to lead the game. Billy Russell tripled him home. Then Reggie Smith walked. And eventually it fell to Steve Garvey to bring Reggie Smith home. And the Dodgers led two to nothing. Then in the bottom of the first inning, the Yankees. Thurman Munson singled. Reggie Jackson singled. And Chris Shamba singled. And Munson came home. It was two to one. The Yankees came second back to get their second run at the bottom of the sixth inning on Willie Randolph's home run. Then they got their third run in the ball game to take the lead in the eighth inning. But the Dodgers came back at the top of the ninth with Dusty Baker, the key man in that one. And it was 3-3, and that's where we are right now in the bottom of the twelfth inning as Willie Randolph is at the plate. He'll be followed by Thurman Munson and Paul Blair. Stands at second. So once again, the Yankees have the leadoff man on, but this time he is at second base. Willie decided to do it all by himself. If nobody else can get anybody to second, he's going to go on his own. Well, now it's Munson's job to get him to third, at least. I'm going to walk through with Munson. I, I certainly, I certainly would. would with yeah. Paul Blair up, and then they'll have to have Blair try to bunt again, and there's the Grody problem. <laughs> I think we've solved this thing for Tom Vassorda. <laughs> Another tough situation, a tough hitter coming up, scoring position. You can't pitch to, you just can't pitch to no, him here. No, no way. way. Jerry Grody giving instructions out there to Rick Roden. I've heard this speech a few times in my day, and I listen very intently, I tell say? you. <laughs> Doug Rao in the bullpen, continuing to throw. So now here's the Yankee captain. Who scored the first run of the ball game. Knocked in the second run of the ball game. Actually knocked in the third run of the ball game. So he's been very much involved in two of the three runs scored by New York. They were walking. 
he think he went out there and talked to him and said, we'll walk in, make this guy bunt, and I'll get the at runner least third. one out, a third. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe two, if I can get out quick enough. Knowing Grody, that stubborn-headed guy, maybe three. You and he had a few words in the clubhouse a couple times, didn't you? Many years ago. Yeah. I had said that he was a doleful hitter. He took exception. <laughs> Here's Paul Blair now with the winning run at second base in the person of Willie Randolph. Thurman Munson is at first base. Munson doesn't matter in this particular instance. Randolph is the man. Three three ball games, the opening game of the 1977 <laughs> World Series. My goodness. I don't know about you, I'm just watching Brody. <laughs> I'm waiting for something to happen. We'll make something happen. Roden sets. Garvey looking right in at Paul Blair can shake hands with him and it's blow it away, ball one. Roden goes to his set position. Garvey comes creeping in from first. Roden's got the responsibility of handling anything down the third baseline within reasonable reach. Got to go that way. Garvey covering on the first base side of the infield. It's one ball and one strike now. Little conference with Dick Bowser. Again, the flag here, Keith. Talked about it before earlier in the ball game. First and second, nobody out. Hit his job is to bunt the ball firm enough to bring that third baseman off of the bag. You're trying to get the runner at second base down to third. Giving up the out at first. A 1-1 one -one pitch. Garvey coming in. Misses. Two balls and one strike. There's Ron Say. There's the man that has to make a quick decision. He's the man in the cat box. You know which way to go, in or back. He's got to make his judgment very quickly if the ball is bunted. Foul. And almost. It's too. <laughs> almost got it out where Jerry can handle it. Blair threw a body <laughs> block on Grote. In the meantime, it's two strikes. So it's a very heavy burden on Mr. Blair. Here's a moment of trivia for you that uh, Paul Blair in spring training had 72 consecutive fair bunts against the batting machine. Yeah, the batting machine is not out there now. The That's batting a hard ma throw. The batting machine right is still down in Florida. That's right. 2-2. Two -two. Roach to Blair. Swing. That'll do it. That'll do it. Here comes Rambo. That'll do it. Yankees win the ball game. What a ball game this was. And for Billy Mott, again, the placement of personnel worked out. He put Blair in for defensive reasons in the night. It was Blair who came through with the game-winning hit, just as he came through with a big hit in the Sunday and final game against Kansas City in the ninth. Two brilliantly matched teams in a superbly played ball game. No errors by either team of commission. One of commission by Chris Chambliss. He's the winning it again. Blair with a two and two count. Rick Roden looks back at second base where the winning one is located. Blair jumps on the pitch, drills it to left field. Willie Randolph came pumping around third. Rick Roden is the losing pitcher. Sparky Lyle is the winning pitcher. And the final score in this first game of the 1977 World Series, Yankees four, Dodgers three, and Paul Blair, who was so important in the Yankees winning the American League pennant, delivers the blow, and he is the man of the moment. As you look down on Yankee Stadium, where the people are still standing, almost in awe as to what they have just seen. Yankees win the opening game by a score of 4-3.